Oh, okay. So, like, the pink ones can be used on, like, limited time events, which means that this one can, like, only be used for Venti here. And the weapons, but who gives a shit about the weapons? Gacha time! Gacha time! Gacha time! Okay, everybody, put your hands in the sky! Auto, oh, no! No! Giant spider, just le let me go! Please let me go! Please let me go! I can't believe this shit! I am face palming so hard right now. <laughs> I feel- okay, so in retrospect, I feel as though maybe naming the monkey Otto was a premonition. I just fucking lost this ch- <laughs> Oh, I'm laughing because it hurts too much to cry. All right. See, don't you guys enjoy my streams? We talk about cannibalism. We go to all the dark places. Every one of my Pokemon is an ace. There's no fuckery on this team at all. And I like it like that. <laughs> Pop has a breakdown after realizing it was perpetuating mortuary cannibals. <gasps> guys. Pop becomes the champion. Pop beats Leon. Pop must consume his older brother for power. <laughs> oh no! What is this world that we've created? <laughs> what is this alternate universe? <laughs> Welcome to my fucking live stream! <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Hey, hey, what you looking at? What you looking at? What you looking at? <laughs> you looking at me? You looking at me? I'm a cute little anime girl. What you looking at? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What you looking at? <laughs> I say if you stare into her eyes for too long, the Pringles man stares back. Oh no! You guys, if we zoom in, guys, guys, you want to know the su the super dark secret that if you if you zoom in too close, you zoom in too close, you zoom in too close, you zoom in too close. Oh god, there he is! <laughs> oh god, there he is! You know what my gym badge holder team can do? Fucking knives. Damn! Toodles? Then a critical hit like that, you're pretty tough when you get serious. It's not, it's not luck. It's knives. Corvus Squire. Yes, I do want to switch. Um, I guess it's. But yeah, so if you guys ever get isekai into a fantasy world, if you ever get hit by a truck and sent to a fantasy world, what you immediately gotta do, first thing you gotta do, get yourself a cool outfit, compose yourself some theme music. Because then you'll be at least moderately safer. If not safer, you will at least be more prepared. You'll have more main ca- TWO yeet birds. You will have more energy to survive the culling of non-important characters. You gotta get yourself a cool outfit, cool hat included. Get yourself some theme music. And you will be at least moderately more fine. If you come into it already having tragic backstory, even better. Even better. You gotta be prepared for this kind of thing. If people in weird hats and 1,000 jobs and theme music ran at me, I would also run. Fair. A good idea. <laughs> Seemed hydrate. I don't have my cup next to me. I chugged the rest of my water before I started the stream. Now I have to go get my cup. I have to fill the water. Where the fuck is my cup? Oh god, I put too much water in the cup. 
have a knife or a cutting board, but you know what we did have? Exacto knives, uh, cutting mats, and a pineapple. <laughs> So, we took, like, these tiny little art exacto blades and we just fucking sawed through this pineapple on top of, like, our desktop cutting mats. We just had ourselves some pineapple that day. <laughs> I love how the chat just chillin' and, like, talking and all of a sudden, like, I see- I see a little tarantula because they get them in Texas. I've seen tarantulas just like on my front porch before. They are like chill, but like don't mess with them. Um, and then I see this wasp the size of like as long as my index finger just attack the thing and then drag its corpse away. And I said, excuse me, relatives. What in God's name was that terrifying creature? And they said, oh, that's a tarantula hawk. And I said, S -s what? And they said, yeah, it's a tarantula hawk. They're these big ass bugs and they eat tarantulas. They live around here. And I'm like, why? If they live here, if they live here, why do you live here? Because that's horrifying! <laughs> yeah, kitty kitty. What's up, y'all? It me! Howdy do. Give me just one second. Start my TikTok live. Roxy, what's the matter, baby? I just fed you. What's the matter, pumpkin? Are you just making noise because you're a dog? Yeah? You sitting here making noise because you're a dog? Hi, everybody. Give me just a second. I gotta pet my puppy real quick. Hi, Roxy. Hello, Pumpkin Muffin. What you doing? What you doing? Hi. Hi, everybody. What the heck is up? Also, Orange Coconut, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream squad. I caught you right um, during the loading screen. Let me check stuff real quick. Get all my chickens in a row. Hit the go live on TikTok. I aspire to your... <laughs> Pootsford! I like your username! Welcome to this stream squad. Thank you for the follow. Star, I aspire to your level of VTuber voice energy. You make it look so easy. Aw, thank you! I, I promise this is not me putting on a voice. This is just genuinely what I sound like all the time. <laughs> I'm just full of energy and beans. Okay, Miss Roxy has settled on her bed behind us, so we're good. She was she was doing her dog thing, where she where she snoots at me. Um, she like she she knows that I don't like it when she barks in the house. Um, and so when she wants to get my attention, instead of barking at me, she'll just pretend to sneeze at me, really really loud. <laughs> And so that's usually what she does when she wants to get my attention. So I thought that maybe, um, maybe she needed to go outside or something. But she has settled down in her bed, so I think we're good. What? I can't use this sock as my elbow rest. It is covered in sticker dust. Where's my other one? Ugh. Sorry, I'm taking a minute. I gotta get settled. You make it sound easy, look and sound easy. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. I finally caught one of the streams. Hi! I recognize your username from Twitter. Thank you for showing up and hanging out. Uh, Pootsford, thank you. I was told about you by my girlfriend who really loves your art. Oh, well, thank you. And tell your girlfriend I said thank you, too. We're drawing today. Oh, I can make my OBS smaller because I'm not playing video games on it right now. Yay! Less screen real estate. Okay, cool. And turn down my music and my headphones real quick. Neat. So how the heck are you guys doing today? It is a Wednesday. And Wednesday is my comic inking day, usually. Either inking or coloring, depending on how much I got done the previous day. Dunham Thern, hello, welcome! Um... But I was, so I was, I was thinking, like, I'll wake up in the morning, and then I will ink my comics, 
and then I can draw something else on stream. Uh, but then <laughs> life kind of got in the way, and by life I mean it's my mom's birthday, and so she was in town, and I we we were hanging out um, for a good cause. But that means that I procrastinated all my comic stuff, so we're actually inking comics during the stream today, which I haven't been doing because spoilers. But these pages are pretty spoiler light, so I figured it was okay. Oh, that's an awful, awful, awful tangent. I'm gonna fix that in a hot second. Gremlin in your closet, hello! Have Borth Starma. <laughs> I will pass along your birthday messages. Thank you, pals. Thank you, stream pals. Yeah, I got- <laughs> I was very, very proud of myself for the gift I got from my mom, because it's something she asked me for a long time ago and then promptly forgot, which is- she does all the time. She's like, oh man, I wish I had one of those. When it's my birthday, get me one of those. And I'm like, okay, thank you for making you easy to shop for. <laughs> um, But she is very much a fan of, like, rhinestones and shiny things, like many mothers are. <laughs> and, um... So I got her, so she had, my mom and my dad uh, live on a ranch, like kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I've talked about this on stream before. And uh, my mom got a truck right before they moved out there full time. And so it's just like a white truck, but it's like, it's small, cute truck. It's a girly truck, as she calls it. And um, so she, a long time ago, asked me to get her, um, or she asked me to make her one. And I ended up just buying it for her and said, um, a... What is it? Like a license plate holder that was like bedazzled with rhinestones. And I was like, I don't know if I could make one of those because I'm not sure what type of like glue I would need to make sure that the rhinestones don't fall off. And she's like, oh, well, I'm sure you could figure it out. And then four years passed or something along those lines. And um, I just never got it for her. Um, just because my mother is very easy to shop for. So whenever like it's Christmas or whatever, she's I always know exactly what to get her because she tells me exactly what she wants. And I'm like, thank you. You're making my life easier. Um, but this time I had remembered that she had wanted that. And she's like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to be in town on my birthday because I, I need to do some errands. Do you want to come hang out? And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, oh, I can get her one of those things like a bedazzled license plate holder. And then I did. And she was very, very excited about it. <laughs> I offered to put it on for her before she left, and she was like, no, I'll put it on when I get home. <laughs> it's very cute. Maydross, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream squad. What the fuck is this railing? What is perspective? I can pretend like I know, but the truth is that I don't know anything about shit at all or anything. Who am I? Where am I going? That looks perspectively accurate, right? Sure it does. I'll do one thing for it, though. Um, Need to make slightly thinner so it looks like disappearing into space. Oh, no, too much. I have it on good authority that you do, in fact, know your shit. Who asked you? <laughs> I, am, I don't know anything. No, don't make me... Uh... I know some stuff about some things, I will admit. This is not one of those things. I don't know what sound just came out of my mouth. It's like five different thoughts at once that all congealed into a terrible scream. <laughs> my mom's birthday's coming up and the one she's been asking for is a puzzle table because she's got to get into the puzzles. Oh man, I fucking love puzzles. Your mom sounds fun. When I was a kid, I used to do, like, those big-ass thousand-piece puzzles with, like, unicorns and glow-in-the-dark paint on them and stuff. Oh, it was so my jam. And then I would, like, glue them together. Um, and I would hang them on- I would nail them to my wall um, of my childhood bedroom. And then they would, like, glow in the dark and they had glitter. I was that kid. I had, like, the glow-in-the-dark unicorn puzzles on my wall. I love me a good jigsaw puzzle. I remember the last time my parents bought a puzzle was a couple years ago. Um, it was in the pre-Rona times. Um, my mom bought this big-ass puzzle, like, thousand-piece puzzle. 
And uh, it was just like a very intricately detailed like picture of someone's living room. Like a nice illustration. And uh, <laughs> she, um, so she got it and she like set it up on the kitchen table. And she was like making decent progress with it. Um, but then at some point she was like, Starla, can you come watch our house over the weekend? Because we're going to be out of town and we need somebody to take care of the dogs. And I was like, yeah, sure, fine. And she's like, can you help me with that puzzle, too, while you're there? Because you like puzzles. And I'm like, I do like puzzles. It's true. And um, so while I was house sitting for them, um, they, they asked me specifically to just, like, come over, hang out for a few hours, and then go home so it doesn't look like the house is unoccupied all weekend. Because that's, like, a security concern or whatever. And over the course of, like, that weekend, just, like, sitting in their kitchen for a couple hours for two days... I finished the whole damn puzzle. <laughs> Fucking thousand piece puzzle. I just did the whole damn thing. And when my parents got back from, I don't even remember where they were, but when they got back, they were like, what the hell? You finished the puzzle. I'm like, you asked me to. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen when you sicked me on a jigsaw puzzle? You know how I am. You know the type of person that I am, mother. <laughs> I'm a jigsaw person. <laughs> Not like the guy from Saw, the, the nicer kind that likes glow-in-the-dark unicorns. The big difference. <laughs> oh, shit! You know what I just realized? I never turned on my, like, my, my song detector thingy. There. There we go. I didn't realize that wasn't turned on. Sorry, friends. Now you guys know what song we're listening to. It's the Nier Automata soundtrack, spoiler alert. Uh, I have to go since I have math class, have a nice stream. Oh, thank you! Hope you have a nice math class. Go get yourself an education. <laughs> I'm just gonna be here drawing bricks all day. Bricks and shit! I'm just going to pretend like this perspective works out. I have no idea if it actually does. This panel is going to be largely covered up by dialogue bubbles anyway, so it's, it's whatever. Oh, I wasn't watching the chat that whole time. Person called Alto, hi. My mom is cool. She named me after a D&D &D NPC. What? That's cool. I'm actually named after someone, too, but I don't want to go into it because I don't want to tell my real name on stream. I guess I already have, kind of, sort of. It's not a happy story, though. <laughs> I am named after my mom's best friend from high school who passed away a few years before I was born. That's the story. Sorry for the bummer. <laughs> I go by star on the internet because it's a shorter version of my actual name. Easier to spell. Like, my actual name, I've almost gotten in trouble with employers before because I go in to start a new job. And they're like, oh, your name is Starla? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, and they're like, okay, cool. They, it looks like they spelled it wrong on the, um, on the, on like the form. And I'm like, no, they probably spelled it right. Please do not change how my name is. <laughs> Please do not change how my name is spelled on official, like, paperwork. I'm gonna get in trouble. My middle name is... Oh, how how do you even say that? Wenfuivar? That's cool. How often do you have to explain how that's spelled to people? <laughs> that's, that's not even a little bit where that perspective line is supposed to go. What am I doing? Okay, um, I was distracted. I was just distracted. Uh, stuff happening. Too distracted to do accurate perspective on my drawing. You know how it is. My 
I need two point perspective. I gotta draw another perspective line. Wow. Okay. There we go. I was named after some random girl my mom coached track because she think she hoped I would be athletic. Oh no. Womp womp. <laughs> um, I was named after my mom's great aunt. Share a name with a notorious hurricane from about 10 years ago. I got teased about it that I got tired of my full- Aww, oh no, I'm sorry. I always wonder, like, if uh, having the same name as a hurricane fucks things up for people. Gwen, Hi Gwen Hiver? And not a lot actually since I don't formally introduce myself like Estefan from Sweet Life. <laughs> Aw, but that's fun though. You should. <laughs> I don't know what your first name is. But if your first name is something really mundane, I think that would be absolutely hilarious. Um, <laughs> um just like... Hello, my name is... Bob Sephiroth. <laughs> Please call me Bob. He's like, then why did you say the Sephiroth part? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it would be funny. Um, what am I doing? Where am I going? Who oh, am I? Do you guys ever think about how many kids out there in the universe are named Sephiroth? Like, legitimately? Because I do. It's not. Okay, fair. I'll take your word for it. I think it would be funny, but it's not my life, so who am I to judge? <laughs> now I'm thinking about Sweet Life, which is a show I have not thought of in many moons. I used to watch that show all the time, though. Twas my jam once upon a time. <laughs> Look at me pretending I know how to do perspective. Drawings. Ha 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 ha. Pretending that I know. I, I feel like if there was ever going to be like. Um. Like a documentary about me. I would want it to be in the form of a nature documentary. And they'd be like. And here we see the artist pretending like she knows how to do perspective. And then I just like turn, look at the camera, scream and run away. <laughs> I want this. <laughs> Not that I think I'm ever going to deserve having a documentary named after me. I just think it would be funny. I have an overall difficult name. I can relate. My last name, I feel like, shouldn't be hard to pronounce. But everyone, like, I, the more I grow up, the more people pronounce it wrong. And I'm like, bro, come on. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's pronounced exactly how it is spelled. Like, okay, it's not a secret. Um, if you do any amount of digging, you'd be able to find out. My last name is Pritchard, but I get so many people who pronounce it Pritchard. Or Prickhard, as like one dude called me once. And I'm like, bruh. <laughs> Anything but that. <laughs> it's like Richard, but with a P in front of it. Made it awkward. When I had a kid in my elementary school whose last name was Richardson, and he's like, if our if we combined our names, we could be our last like if we get married, we could combine our last names. And I'm like, yeah, cool, you're creepy. Never speak to me again, please. I don't know what happened to him. He's out there somewhere, I'm sure. My actual name is a very common girl's name that has a hundred spellings, so it's annoying for two reasons. Oof, I can imagine. I was mentally pronouncing your last name wrong, so I'm glad I can correct myself now. There you go. You're learning things on my stream. Not the things you thought you were going to learn, but I'm full of surprises, you see. <laughs> I think people think that my last name is like French or something. It's not. It's Welsh. We have zero Welsh in my family line, as far as I know. So I don't know where that came from. 
Anyway. Collect last names like the Infinity Stones? Oh my god. <laughs> Fun fact! I've actually, um... I've actually only seen the first Avengers movie. I stopped watching Marvel movies after the first Avengers because I got bored. So, like, I only... I only know what I've seen on the internet. Like, I keep making references to them, but I've never seen them. Ooh, spooky. The first Marvel movies were the better ones. Yeah, that's the impression that I get, which is why I kind of stopped watching them. I like Thor. He's cute. And he's got, he's, he's got that big himbo energy that I adore so very much. I'd let him carry me over the threshold of our new home that he built with his bare hands. <laughs> you know? And I've always like I've always liked Spider-Man. He's always been my favorite. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which Spider-Man it is. I enjoy Peter Parker as a concept. Hello, sir. Hello! Welcome to stream! We're drawing bricks and talking about the Avengers and how I haven't seen them. I only know them from just being on the internet. Like, I can make references to them all day. Doesn't make- I mean that I've actually seen the movies. Aha! I fooled you all! Surprise! <laughs> I like drawing bricks. Sometimes. I gave up after, like, Civil War because I can't watch three-hour superhero movies anymore, right? I think the last superhero movie that I saw that was- that Into the Spider-Verse doesn't count because that movie is a fucking gem, but I'm talking about, like, mainline live-action MCU movies. I stopped caring after the first Avengers, and I'm like, wow! There's so many characters! Okay, I think I'm done with this franchise forever now. <laughs> Not for any particular reason, I think I just got bored. I get bored of multimedia, like, mega franchises real easily. I don't know why, but I do. Like, I never- I've never enjoyed Star Wars, either. Like, the- the- the first- like, the first, first, first movie is good. I forget which one that's- I forget what- is that one New Hope? I forget. I can't keep the names of them all straight. Um... Movie number four, whichever one that was, I enjoyed what I have seen with about that one. Okay, New Hope. I was right. That's what I thought. It just, New Hope sounds like the name that should be the final movie in a trilogy, so my brain gets confuzzled. Um, but anyway, I like that one. We watched that one for like a storyboarding class one time and that in college, and that was the first time I had ever seen it. And I was like, this is a good film. Um... But, like, I'm not big into just, like, the Star Wars universe as a whole. I'm just like, yep, they are movies. They are- they have laser swords. That part's cool. I like the laser swords. Um. And my brother enjoys the Lego Star Wars games. I've watched him play those. Um. But aside from that, I have, like, no fr I like the Star Wars memes. I like memes. I don't like- I don't care much for the actual franchise. I personally think it's a little bit boring. I'm not big into sci-fi as a person. Like, I'm not gonna rag on the series because I don't know anything about it. It's just not for me. This is not for me. I did see- I saw- I remember seeing the prequels when I was a little kid because my dad took me to go see them in theaters. And I fell asleep during all three. And I was confused because I thought that Darth Maul and Darth Vader were the same person. I was like, when does when does this child turn into Darth Maul? How can they exist in the same place? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, I got a little bit confused. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I was like eight, okay? I didn't know shit. My dad was like, oh, I will take my daughter to see this film in theaters and it will be a big experience because it's Star Wars and everyone likes Star Wars. And, uh, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm stupid and I didn't like it and I fell asleep because their prequels were bad. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Star Wars is more of a space fantasy. Yeah, I it's a space fantasy that's not for me. Like, I'm not gonna rag on people who enjoy it. Of course not. Everybody enjoys different things. That's just not for me. I've got an uncle who is absolutely fucking obsessed with Star Wars, though. Revenge of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars. Which one is that? Which number? Which number? Everyone born after, like, 1998? Sure. <laughs> I was born before that, though. I'm older than that. I, I just... I don't know. Episode 3? Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I can't keep the movie titles straight, which kind of... I don't know. There's too many of them. In my opinion. Okay, yeah, that's the one that gets memed on a lot, so I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the memes at the very least. Bare minimum! I know the memes. That's me with, like, most media franchises. I don't know shit about this thing, but I sure as heck know about the memes, though. <laughs> I sure as heck know me some memes. Basically every line in that movie has become a meme. Yeah. I was a fucking Star Wars nerd as a wee lad and then I got old enough to be like, oh, these don't have good writing or directing, but I was still a fan because of myself. Hey, listen, we're all entitled to our nostalgia series. I definitely have shows that, like, I I love them. I'm not gonna recommend them to other people because they're not, like, good or whatever. But it's, uh, mm, mm, kind of me with Code Geass. Like, listen, I don't even think I like this show. I just come back to it because it's familiar and easy to watch. That's also kind of me with Idolmaster. It's like, listen, I love it, but I totally understand if people tell me that they don't love it, because, like, I get it. It's not spectacular. But I like it, and you might like it, too. I just know that I've got a couple friends, like one friend in particular, who was very, very big into Star Wars, like, as the um, new trilogy was coming out and apparently felt very, very betrayed by some of the shit that happens in the last movie of the new trilogy. And I was like, oof, I don't know what you're talking about, but I will, I will pat your shoulder, friendo. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I've heard Star Wars fans can be kind of gross and mean to each other. And that's not cool. I hope that my, like, comic readership never gets so mean that people- gets so big that people think it's okay to be mean to each other just because they're a fan of what I make. I think that would suck for any creator, is to be like, yeah, I make this thing, and apparently it has a reputation because the fans are terrible. Like, that would suck, man. It's like, I'm just over here making comics and shit, and people are being mean to each other over it? Like, what the fuck? I just make this because it's fun. Look at all these bricks I drew! and Homestuck. Oof, yeah, I, I had a, like, I was never into Homestuck. I couldn't get into it, but I had some friends who were in it, and woof, the stories I have heard. I understand. I mean, not fully, but I kind of do. There's a reason George Lucas sold it. I can, I, yeah, you know, when you say it like that, I think I get it. Big oofs all around. I don't like admitting I'm a Rick and Morty fan publicly because the fandom is the worst thing ever to happen to humanity. Oof, yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah. Like, I, I rarely engage with fandom, like... 
as a concept at all. Like, very, very, very rarely do I actually engage with fandoms, like, in any sense of the word. Um, usually if I like something, I just draw fan art and then go back in my hole. <laughs> my little hidey hole where it's safe and I don't have to worry about people being jerks to me. <laughs> um, like, uh... Like, I, I can't even remember the last time um, I was involved in something that had a crazy fandom. Oh, hold on. My TikTok timer just went off. I mean, because, like, the last time I really genuinely got involved in a fandom, aside from Bravely Default, which is the hell that I'm currently back in, because I liked the sequel way more than I thought I was going to, um, I think the, I guess Critical Role counts. I'm, I'm pretty deep in that one. Not, not currently. Um, but, because I'm like 20 or 30 episodes behind on Critical Role. Oops! Um, but like also Adventure Zone. I think Adventure Zone was like the first time I ever really got involved in a fandom. You know? Um... And even then, it was mostly just, like, having nice conversations with people at cons more than anything else. Critical Role has some crazy fans. Yeah, I mean, the good news is that I follow the right- I guess I just follow the right people because I never actually see the crazy fans. I only see people complaining about the crazy fans. I'm just finishing up the Pirates of Vantica arc. Ooh, that's a good one. I love Avantika. She can- she can throw me into the sea. It's okay, I'll swim. <laughs> uh, I my my problem is that like I I tend to like not even for any particular reason. I just kind of get bored sometimes, and it's not even because like whatever I'm watching is bad or boring. I just I can't stay invested in one single thing for more than like a couple weeks at a time. Like I my my fandom comes in waves. It's like, I will be heavily involved in this fan base for, like, two weeks, and then I'm gonna duck out for, like, six months. And I jump back into it. For four hours long. Yeah! Um, I tend to listen to all their episodes. Um, I've actually discovered that I do not enjoy watching Critical Role live, because I would much rather go back and re-watch the uh, previously aired episodes and play them at 1.5 speed. I tried watching live! And they talked so slow, it drove me crazy! I'm like, oh my god, talk faster! Because <laughs> I was listening to the episodes, like, on my own time at, like, 1.5 or even, like, 2 times speed. I just gotta fucking zoom. You know? <laughs> Cast off fandom is really nice, though. I'm glad. I, I'm very happy about that. I'm glad that people, like, are comfy enough to join the Discord and hang out and talk about theories. Oh, y'all, I was re like, mm, I'm not gonna say anything, but I was reading through, like, that theory discussion y'all were having right before the stream, and I'm just, like, laying in bed eating cookies, and I'm just like, oh, yes. Yes. Yum, yum, yum. Tell me more. Tell me more. I'm just, this is delicious. I eat, I consume fan theories for lunch along with my chocolate chip cookies. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> 1.5 speed critical role is a genius idea. Yeah, I listen to most of my podcasts um, at 1.5 speed, unless it's like, like Magnus Archives, I can't do 1.5 speed because it's so atmospheric, but for something where you're just kind of like trying to chew through unedited audio of people playing D&D, gotta go fast. That's, that's how I roll. I roll real fucking, just, just big ol' zooms. I'm glad that folks genuinely have a nice time with the fan base for my comic, because, like, it's weird to even say that I have a fan base. Like, that, that makes me sound so self-centered. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I've got a, flips hair, fan base? I don't know if you've heard of it. Of my webcomic that I make? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where the fuck? Here it is. I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating. Don't mind me, don't mind me. Because I don't want to have to perspective out all of these roof tiles. 
What's the most toxic thing you've ever seen happen in the cast-off fandom or any drama? It wasn't a fandom thing, but the creepiest thing that ever happened was a dude who came into my comment section and tried to finagle enough world building out of what had currently been released. This was in like chapter two. Tried to finagle enough about the world building out of what had already been revealed to justify the characters in universe having guns so that he could role play killing Ariana because he didn't like her, I guess. That was pretty fucked up. <laughs> Dubly Ghost, no! Don't be a spreader of, of drama and lies. No. I think I remember that person. Yeah, yeah, I banned them a long time ago, but that was a whole thing, and it was buck wild. It made me so fucking uncomfortable. And he just kept commenting! Like, every page in Chapter 2, he had a comment like that. And I was like, you know what, I, I think I'm done with you. And then I, I blocked his ass. The comment section was real harsh towards Ariana for a while. Like, that was kind of what I was going for because I enjoyed the, like, the dichotomy of, oh, everybody hates this character and now I'm gonna make you love him. Give me a chapter and a half. Because, <laughs> um, like, that's kind of what I'm doing with Rory right now. We're kind of in the middle of that. We just haven't, she just hasn't had enough screen time yet for y'all to properly get to know her. And also, she's, like Ari, like Marina said, not good at first impressions. People wanting to kill characters makes me uncomfortable. Same! It's why I blocked that dude a long time ago. <laughs> Guns can be super girl, but cool, but that guy can go away forever. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I enjoy, like, um, I like skeet shooting. I don't like people coming into my comment section and telling me how they would kill one of my characters. And I'm like, you know what, you... Need to talk to a therapist, maybe. Bye. And my comment section is not your therapy zone, so maybe let's just take a chill pill about that. Maybe just just not do this now. It's been 45 minutes and I've not even finished inking a single panel. Ah! Anyway. I just get so into drawing bricks and talking to chat. Hopefully the rest of the panels will go by a little faster. I was okay with um, inking these pages on stream because they're just kind of talking for a long time. Um, but I definitely will not be able to stream the pages after this because this is like the last bastion of spoiler freeness before we jump back into no one can see these pages until they are released because then you'll be able to figure shit out and it will reveal some of the twists in the visuals. Can't have that. Spoiler alert, Rory is alive. Y'all! <laughs> no, they're all dead. Spoiler alert. Secrets. And not hugged to death. Listen. Frankie brought her back to life with the power of friendship, okay? He suplexed her all the way back to heaven. And then she came back and she was like, guess what? I lived, bitch. <laughs> But yeah, as far as crazy fandom stuff, I I genuinely feel like that guy was the weirdest thing that's ever happened. Aside from that, remarkably chill. People seem to read my comic, which is nice. There's some people who get weird in the Webtoons comments, but I'm, I'm barely sure that that even counts. Okay, fuck it. I'm gonna ink some of these easy panels first. I, 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 di I ate my vegetables. I drew the background. I deserve it.
Webtoons commenters are a special breed. They really are. Like, I get a lot of sweeties there, but I also get a lot of people who are not very nice. Just generally unpleasant. And the problem, like, it wouldn't be so much of a problem if Webtoons has, like, any form of comment moderation whatsoever. Because they really don't have any of that. Any of that. Your update's too short! Yeah, exactly. I hate those. But the nice thing about the getting, like, the two short messages is that I can then just whip right back around and be like, Hey, well, it's funny that you mentioned that. See, here's the thing is that, like, I don't make this comic as my full-time job, but I sure would like to. So if you want to help us get to that point and then have longer updates, you can join my Patreon. Here's a link. They never do. <laughs> but it makes them feel bad. Got them. <laughs> Oh god, yes, in the immediate shipping of everything. I still laugh about how quickly folks dropped the uh, Vector Ariana ship after the end of chapter one. Because, like, a lot of people were going just like ham, like, oh my god, a guy and a girl interacting! Ship! I was like, okay, well, uh, y'all keep that in mind for the end of the chapter, because uh, you're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh about uh, what's... You're not gonna laugh, I'm gonna laugh. But, you know, stuff happens. I would argue that they can be toxic as a collective, but my comments are not terrible, so eh. But I, I try to remember that like 90% of people who comment on webtoons are like kids who probably shouldn't be on the internet anyway. But what can you do? What can you do really? Haven't seen shipping wars on cast off. No, they're generally like people will be like, oh, I ship these characters. And other people will jump in and be like, oh, I also ship those characters. That's like as close as we get to a ship war. But overall, people in my comments are relatively chill, which I'm thankful for. I think it's just because I don't think my comment like or I don't think my comic really like acknowledges romantic relationships in any way. Or at least it hasn't yet. And so it doesn't tend to attract the audience who would be, like, very feral about that kind of thing. He's like, I've, I've discussed this before. It's not spoilers at this point. Like, there will be romance in the comic, but not for a long fucking time. The characters have other things to worry about right now. These kiddos have bigger issues over who's smooching who. Because right now the answer is no one. No one is smooching anyone. Except people smooching Ariana's fist. And she punches them in the face. My OTP is Ariana's fist x anyone else. Except for the other main characters. <laughs> Ariana can punch cops all she wants. It is the right that I give to her as the creator of the universe. She, like, pulls a little piece of paper out of her pocket that says, See this? This is my... This is my, um... This is my permit for fantasy cop punching. And she just punches people. But the actual permit's just, like, a little piece of paper that says, I do what I want in size 12 font. Probably handwritten. I do what I want. And then she she wants to punch. <laughs> I appreciate that it isn't very romance-focused. Well, well I'm, I'm glad. Because, like, I'm not a big romance fan myself. Um, and also, like, I, I feel like co a lot of comics, like, people who go big into ships, you need to stop and appreciate friendship sometimes. And I think that's important, and that's what more what I'm interested in focusing on, rather than, like, strict one-on-one -on -one romantic relationships. OTP, one true punch! I love that! <laughs> I would like to remind everyone that Frankie's also punched multiple cops. That is true. That is true. That is correct, he has. It takes a bit for me to even see a ship, but after Ariana's reaction to Marina grabbing her hand killed me. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those two are fun. We'll see more of how their relationships evolves over this chapter, which is one of the reasons I'm so excited for it. Because we get to 
we get to mix up the um kind of the dynamics in this chapter because we've only ever seen like the trio together and so what happens when they're separated is like they kind of have to work out new relationship dynamics with new people and how do they deal with that when they're like emotional crutch isn't there and so it's I'm, I'm very excited for this chapter i've mentioned this before so i don't think this counts as spoilers but um like I i've told people in the past about how this chapter originally just like didn't really even exist because originally what happened was like the next morning they woke up and they got on the boat to go to the city and they got there and then they parted ways and it was boring as fuck. And so I'm like, I kept brainstorming, like, how do I make this chapter more interesting? How do I make it more exciting? How do I give these characters more development? And also, if possible, how do I get Marina and Rory to want to come? Um, Cause like there was a while I waffled back and forth for years during the comics development over do Marina and Rory come along with the party or not. And um, like, do they become part of this weird sinking ship or do they just go home at the end of the day? Um, and then I came up as like, oh, we'll split the party, obviously. See what the fuck happens. It's this this chapter is there's going to be a lot of action in it, but it is also largely a character development chapter because it's seeing how these characters interact with each other is a large part of it. Wake up, do a little stretch, say bye. Yeah, that was kind of what, like what chapter 10 was going to be. I'm like, no, this is fucking boring. Rory and Vector have hardly interacted, so I'm excited to see what their relationship will be like. Yeah, exactly, because like we've met these characters, but they haven't really had a chance to like interact with each other much. And so they it's, it's a whole thing. I'm excited for this chapter. I hope you guys are, too. I've been talking so much, I'm thirsty. Mostly, my big thing was that I wanted to get Vector and Ariana separated. Because we haven't really seen much of them interacting without the other person around. And so I wanted to be like, you know, Vector is his own person. He's not just like who he is when Ariana's around. So I wanted to kind of capitalize on that for this chapter too. Yeah, Marina and Frankie. We're going to get some more of them later, but you can probably guess not during this chapter. <laughs> I want to make sure that all the beans get to know each other. Hydrate. <laughs> I take a big sip. I love the decision to separate the adults from the kids. Yeah, that also, because like the kids, they've been chaperoned like the whole story. And I'm like, no. It is time for there to be chaos. No chaperone. The kids have run off on their own life or death field trip. Now what the fuck do they do? I really want to give Vector a head pat. He looks so distressed. <laughs> he is distressed 90% of the time. He's had a rough couple days, my poor boy. Frankie has pl spent plenty of time on chaperone. Yeah, he's kind of becomes the chaperone, I suppose. He's not exactly responsible. No, he's not. He's just Frankie. He's happy to be here, but he doesn't know what to do in a rough situation. Frankie's response to bad situation is just run away. And you will see what I mean by that before too long. Vector and Frankie have to put Rory on a leash. That's the chapter. Oh no! They spend the whole chapter like shopping for leashes. Frankie's definitely got the most life experience out of them. Yeah, because like he's fifth. Like okay, so his age is like a whole weird thing, right? Because like he's technically. How long have you been fifteen? A while. Because <laughs> like he he's the same age as the rest of the kids in the group but like he's been a quote unquote adult the whole time so mentally he is closer to like 30 
Except he's a dingus and he's just here to have a good time and he's certainly not that emotionally mature. He just... He's got that level of life experience. You know? So he's, he's kind of worthy of being a chaperone, but he'd be like the fun chaperone that like doesn't actually help. They just like the kids like them. Frankie would be is like the bad substitute teacher who like comes in and just tells you life stories, but you don't actually learn any math that day. <laughs> you know, that's kind of his vibe. Also, this is a panel of him being sad. It's hilarious how Rory is the oldest of them. She is! Not by much, but she is a little bit. <laughs> by like a couple months. Not by much, but just enough. Frankie would be like summer camp chaperone. Oh my god, he absolutely would. I feel like if... If this was like a real world AU, Frankie would be like a like the best summer camp counselor. Everyone would love him. I had this one sub who played the harmonica and had us reenact Star Wars scene in a comp tech class. Oh, that's incredible. I love that. If I've ever had a fun sh um, substitute like that, I do not remember because I graduated high school over 10 years ago. I'm old. Not as old as I could be, but older than most of my audience, I would argue. Woof. Vector is book smart. He is! He's book smart, he's not world smart. Like, he knows a lot of stuff about things, but he doesn't know stuff about life. Print that on a t-shirt and sell it. <laughs> I'm very excited for the... Frankie bonus comic, because you guys are going to get to see kind of a different side of his character. I, I promise I am working on it. It's just hard when you have to, like, do comics on top of a, the other comic that you have to make for, like, you know, work. Points at this one. I have to figure out character designs for the Frankie comic. Like, I have them in my head, but I need to actually, like, figure out what colors I'm using and stuff. It's baby Frankie, so I'm hoping to see him with two eyes. I will guarantee nothing. You guys will see how he do later. Because, I mean, if you think about it, Frankie is the one who we know the least about in the group, backstory-wise. And I feel like his backstory is also the one that could be the most variable. Because, like, who is this boy? We don't know. Like, we have a general idea of what Vector's childhood was like. We have a general idea of what Ariana's childhood was like. Frankie? We don't know shit about this man's. We don't know shit about this boy. And so I'm excited to finally show, like, a little bit of what he had going on. So one one thing I will tell you guys, I'll go ahead and tell you, like, the time period it takes place in. Um, so Frankie is 15 in the main comic. This comic is, like, if we're going by, like, actual time, quote-unquote, like, assuming that his age is just, like, how long he's been out and about in the world, um, he is, like, less than a year old when this comic takes place. Like, if we're going by human years and not Frankie years. So, technically, yes, baby Frankie. Very, very early Frankie. I'm ready for the sad. <laughs> it's actually, um, so... I would say that, huh... It's not a sad comic. I would argue that it is the most cheerful of all the, like, of all the little, like, Christmas slash winter comics I've posted. That doesn't mean it's like a barrel of sunshine, because there's gonna be some stuff it hints at. Um, but, you know, it's Frankie origin story, kind of, sort of. Just like a little piece of it. Just a little snack-a-doodle. 
given how the other mini comics were, that's not really saying much. I, I will say it is significantly happier than Ariana's. I will say it's it's close to Vector's. Um, but Vector's is more like, oh no, break your heart, like sadness. Frankie's is more like, oh no? Question mark? Because <laughs> it implies a lot of things without actively, like, telling you what happened. And so you're kind of left to guess certain things. I feel like I'm, I'm teetering close to spoilers, but whatever. I'll just say that Frankie's been through some shit, but I'm sure you all could have guessed that. <laughs> Friends get Frankie backstory as a treat. Yeah, as a treat, as a little snack. Hey, you guys, I'm going to be right back. Um, I got to go take a bathroom bake. Um, I'll be back in like three minutes. Don't go anywhere. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I don't know why my clip player wasn't working. But, hmm. I'll have to fiddle with that later. I'm checking- I'm catching up on the chat while I drink my water. Uh, people are working on fan art comics. Those are due on Saturday. Wink. Or just fan art in general. I'm in the comic mindset. I can't escape from it. I'm excited by how many people have entered so far. Like, yay. Thank you for participating. Yeah. Fan, like, I for those who are joining us, I am having a fan art contest for my comic 6th anniversary, and if you win, I will draw a character of your choice in the comic as like a background character. Woo! <laughs> Too busy to start one now. Yeah, it's relatable. It's relatable. 
There's just not enough time in the day. You know? Never enough time. I've entered five times already. Yeah! A couple people have submitted a lot. <laughs> okay. I drew the easy panels. That's my little, my little easy panel snack. I suddenly really wanted to make this drawing, so here we are. Yay! I'm excited to see. Oof, senior year, good luck. Godspeed, friendo. I believe in you. Kick its butt. Right in the butt. Oh my god, you guys are just completely unrelated to anything that we're talking about. But rewinding just a little bit. Y'all remember how we talked about how Ariana has a license to punch people? It's... <laughs> it's her punch card. He's like, yes, this is the card that- this is my permit that allows me to punch people as much as I want. My punch card. Fuck you. And she punches people. Hee hee hee. Assigned punch at birth. Jeez. Oh, yay! Internet is being fixed, yay! Hello, person called Alto. What's up? Recent real life tragedy has pretty, pretty much killed my motivation for school. Oof, oh no. I'm sorry, friend. I hope things get better for you soon. That's rough. Can that please be the next Patreon sticker? Ariana having a punch card? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Y'all remind me after the stream and maybe I'll draw it <laughs> if I remember and I have time. I'm trying to strike a balance between drawing all the Bravely Default fan art I want to draw, but also doing the comic that I need to draw and also doing the Frankie comic, which I also need to draw. I, I was telling my mom this this afternoon, is like, the worst part about my job is that I have too many things to draw and not enough time with which to draw them. It sucks! I need another pair of hands! So I can do draws all the time. I drew my first ship art yesterday, you guys! My first ship art that, for characters that were not my own. Halfway to the next Patreon goal, it won't be long until you get to the Zara comic. I know! I didn't think we were gonna get there, like, for another few years, and now we're, like, $75 away from me getting to do the Zara comic, and I'm like, fuck, I, I hope I finish the Frankie comic before they unlock the Zara comic, because goddamn, that one's even longer! <laughs> like, the Frankie comic is only gonna be six pages. Only. Um, buy ten punches get the next one free. <laughs> you have to finish the Frankie comic before you get to the Zellera comic. I know! I can only do one at a time. And also, like, my most recent goal was, um, that we hit was the, um, like, the little mini comics. Like, I'm, so I'm gonna do some, like, little Four Coma comics, but those won't take long at all, and I can do those one at a time, thankfully. Oh, the chat's going so fast. There's like twice the amount of people here today that are usually in my stream, and I'm very excited about it. Hi, everybody. I know we, we've been here, <laughs> but like just I know I've got a lot of people lurking probably, I'm sure, and I just wanted to say hi, thanks for lurking, thanks for hanging out. Even if you're not in chat, I appreciate you being here, thank you. You're becoming famous, that's why. Stop! No... It always weirds me out when people say it's like, oh yeah, Star's famous, or Star's an influencer. I'm like, no, I'm not. Listen, I barely know what I'm doing. I... <laughs> the kids, they're alive. They are. It's the kids. Here they are. The kid, new kids on the block. <laughs> A true celebrity. Stop! 
<laughs> you have 19 active viewers. I'm lucky to get one. Well, I mean, didn't you just start streaming? That's that's how it always is for everybody. I was streaming to like two or three people for the first several years. Like, I've been streaming since before Twitch was a thing. I used to use, like, Ustream. Does anybody else remember Ustream or Livestream, the website? Or Picardo? I know simply some people still use Picardo, but I don't. I have been stream- like, if you go and, like, look at my Twitch stats, you'll see it's like, Oh, well, she started with six active viewers. She is not- it doesn't count. She started famous. I'm like, no! Beats you with, like, a- like a gentle stick. Like, hey, I have been streaming since like 2010 on various platforms. Twitch is my most recent one and by far my most successful. You're like the only streamer I regularly watch. Well, thanks for being here and hanging out. I'm flattered, thank you. I'm glad you guys are here and hanging out with me, it's nice. I remember live stream. Ah, a fellow relic. Welcome. <laughs> That's so me. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm almost out of my water. You just unlocked hidden memories. <laughs> I had live stream when I only had DeviantArt. That was years before Twitter, before Tumblr. I think the only social media I had back then was DeviantArt. Woof. And cast off cast to streamers. Listen, I've joked that Rory would absolutely be the type. She, like, built her own PC. She plays Xbox. <laughs> Probably. Ariana would rage kit every game she streamed. She would. It's true. I think I, I remember doing this, but I have no idea where it is these days. Um, but I definitely remember, like, writing down at some point. I think it was a Tumblr text post. Writing down, like, uh, what, how all the cast would, like, what video games the cast would like and how they would play them. Or, like, that and also, like, who everyone would main in Smash. I definitely, I definitely did that as like a Tumblr text post. Their ear is way too low. That's what's bothering me about this panel. Rory, put your ear back where it's supposed to go, girl. There. Needs to be further up. That's a better location for an ear. Marina probably does ASMR comfy streams. Probably. And meanwhile, Rory's just upstairs like fucking screaming. I bet Rory would main Kirby. Actually, um, I remember when I did like the Smash mains thing, um, I said that Rory would main like all of the technical characters, like, um, but also they had to be really fast because she is also fast. Um, I think I had Vector maining Kirby because he doesn't know what to do. He just likes to float around. <laughs> um, but Rory plays like Falco and all of them. Lottie Pendragon, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream squad. We're drawing comics and talking about Smash. <laughs> Frankie would get lost in the straight hallway, but the viewers don't mind because the tangent he goes on to is always interesting. Yeah, that fit. Oops, sorry. I bonked the mic. That fits. That works for him. I feel like Vector and Frankie would do like- Oh, you know what? I've never, um, I've never actually played it, but I feel like Vector would be very into Minecraft. Or just, like, any game that lets you build things and, like, kind of be creative about that sort of stuff. He'd get very into that. He'd probably also like life simulators, like Harvest Moon and whatnot. I can see him enjoying, like, anything that... He doesn't enjoy games that make you fight things. Um, but he likes things where he can just kind of, like, chill out. He probably would really enjoy Stardew Valley and hate the dungeon crawling sections of it. Came from your TikTok. Didn't think you'd be streaming today, so it must be a lucky day. Aw, thank you for following. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are my stream days. Um, so Monday and Friday I do gaming, and then Wednesdays are my art streams. That's my schedule. I didn't used to stream games so frequently, but then Bravely Default 2 happened, and now I'm just continuing it. Vector would absolutely like Animal Crossing. He would dig it so much. 
there's games too. Yeah, uh, Monday and Friday are my game days. Um, I just finished my full playthrough of Bravely Default 2. Um, and we're gonna start- we're, well, okay, so like that poll I put on Twitter, everyone wants me to play more Katamari on Friday, so I'm probably just gonna do that. Um, but then on Monday, we will start the new long series game. Um, cause I've already- I already know what I'm gonna do, I've already drawn the character art for it. And I'm excited about it. It's a game that I have played in the past, but it's been a long ass time. So I don't remember most of it. Which is a surprise. Yeah, it's a surprise. Yeah, Vector would get really sad by like the old Animal Crossing games where everyone where like some of the villagers are kind of mean. He doesn't understand why some people like in the newer Animal Crossings are complaining that some of the villages aren't as mean as they could be. He's like, but I don't like video game characters being mean to me. And then he just frowns. Cause he's a good boy and he doesn't like it when people are mean to him. <laughs> Which is why he's been having such a bad time. <laughs> He's just a soft boy. Oh my god, listen, he would probably, like, the, as soon as the game started guilt-tripping him for not saving, he would shut it off and then never pick it back up again because he was scared. That's what happened to me with uh, Luigi's Mansion and Pikmin. Um, those were my very first two console games. Um, my very first video game that I ever owned was um, Pokemon Gold version. Um, but then I got, um, a GameCube for my birthday later, and my first two games that I got, it was like a Christmas present, I got a GameCube the year it came out. And, uh, I got Luigi's Mansion, and I got Pikmin. And Luigi's Mansion was too spooky. It was too scary. Um, for a little eight-year-old me. And then I tried play- but I got really into Pikmin, because Pikmin was a lot of fun, but then as soon as you started the level, where everything was, like, super dark. It was too scary, and I couldn't play it anymore. <laughs> and, like, I eventually... I eventually got, like, Mario Sunshine, and that's what really got me started playing on the GameCube. Um, but before that, it was just big concern. That's, like, the third level. Yeah, it was! Um, so, like, I did the first two levels, and I was completely fine, but then as soon as it got all dark and scary, I was like, no, I shouldn't be here. I was too spooked. What game would Ariana's favorite be and Frankie's? Well, um, I can only really speak from my own experience, but I think of the games that I enjoy, um, or at least know exist, I feel like Frankie would be really into games like Metopia, where he can put like the names of his own friends in there and just kind of like watch them do shenanigans. He would probably be very into like Tomodachi Life and like the Nintendo simulators like that. Oh, he would love that shit so much. He'd be like, hey, Vector! Vector, look! You and... <laughs> you guys are going on an adventure! And he's like, oh my god! That one looks like me! And it would be very, very wholesome. And Fre Vector would just, like, watch him play and, like, ask for updates every time they saw each other. It would be very wholesome. Ariana, I feel like... She would probably play Doom. Like, I've never played Doom, but I feel like Ariana would play Doom. She'd play anything that lets her just, like, button mash and just, like, engage in violence. She'd probably, like, try platformers like Mario and get super frustrated because she couldn't beat them. She's not actually that good, like, dexterity-wise in the video game, and she keeps, like, falling off ledges and screaming. And then Rory teases her about how she has to get good. Would Frankie do art streams of map drawing? He totally- yeah, you know what? Probably. Except that his map making process is very, like, very kind of, like, random and not academic at all, because he kind of taught himself. Um, and so, like, actual map makers would try and come into the stream and be like, oh my god, you're doing it wrong, and Frankie's like, there is- Frankie would be the Bob Ross of map making. <laughs> He'd be like, there's a tree somewhere around here. No mistakes, just happy little trees. <laughs> Frankie Bob Ross. God, that's another sticker I need to make. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that other people are enjoying that concept as much as I am in my own head right now. 
I need a Frankie Bomb Ross sticker. <laughs> I might. I might just do that. I think that would be fun. I've never needed a sticker more. <laughs> Listen, um, I have a feeling that June's mail club is probably gonna be like Pride Month themed, but after that, after that, we shall see. We'll just have like a general like pseudo modern AU hobbies theme where like we can draw Rory as a game streamer and Bob Ross Frankie. <laughs> Put that on the docket for future polls. I feel like like I'm I'm listening to Zelda music right now and I'm just thinking, hmm, who would like Zelda the most? I feel like probably Rory would get really into like, no, you know what? Vector would fucking love Legend of Zelda, especially like the older ones where you just kind of like wander around and then like there's like story stuff. It's like, oh, very much like heavy chosen one. I, I would imagine like Vector would get very into Link, very into Link to the Past. Probably. Because he, he, like, spends all of his time reading, and so I imagine that he would be the type who gets very into, like, story-based games. But also games where you can, like, kind of adventure. Zelda has spooky monsters, though, and they might make him cry. That's also true. That's also true. Maybe he goes to Rory, and he's like, Rory, there's monsters scary. Beat this level for me. I, I will admit that I'm mostly familiar with the newer Zeldas. Like the first Zelda game I ever actually played was Wind Waker, and I don't own I don't own any of the games before that. Yeah, Rory, help! <laughs> Rory, there's an evil squid, <laughs> and she just kind of like sighs and takes the controllers. Like, okay, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> He's like, beat this squid, it's creepy, and she's like, okay, fine, and she beats it in like two seconds. Oh no, Majora's Mask would destroy him. He would hate it. <laughs> My poor boy can't handle Majora's Mask. Absolutely not. I'm currently trying to help my little brother navigate all the games over video calls. Oh, this is exactly that, except long distance. Oh no. <laughs> Rory is nowhere to be found and Ariana has to help it. She's just like, okay, so I'm imagining Ariana trying to help poor Vector with a video game and it's hearkening back to my first video game experience of like me owning a video game. If you guys have played Pokemon Gold, you know the part where like there's the pseudo Wudo that's like blocking the path and it's like a weird tree. It's just kind of in the way. When I got to that part, when I was a kid playing that game, I got confused and I didn't know there was like an alternate route where you could like go around the tree. So I like tearfully went to my dad who knows nothing about video games and went, dad, I can't get past this part. And he was like, well, look. he's like, dad, I need help. And we were like looking through the instruction manual, trying to figure out why we couldn't get past this weird fucking tree. And eventually we just kind of gave up. And I'm not sure when or how I figured out that there was like an alternate route. I, wa I seriously wonder if maybe I asked a friend at school the next day. Be like, how do you get past this tree? And they were like, you don't go that way. You go a different way. And I'd be like, oh. That's probably what happened, because I can't see little old me, like, trying to figure that out as a kid and then actually figuring it out. This is my first time playing a video game. What was I supposed to do? I don't know shit. I don't know sh stuff about things. I literally have to use a walkthrough for every game I play. I try to avoid them because I'm too prideful. <laughs> 
I'm like, no, I can figure it out. And then that's the one reason why I never beat Majora's Mask, because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I got stuck, and I was like, god damn it, eight-year-olds play and enjoy this game. I should be able to figure this out, and then I didn't. And then I never went back and finished it. <laughs> Someone has to play Bloodborne for the aesthetic. Hmm. Probably. I feel like... I feel like for that... It's Zara. You know, probably. Although, I feel like Zara would probably be the type of person... Like, he'd watch someone else play it and get kind of interested, but be like, oh, I'm not actually that interested. It's like, I just kind of want to watch you guys play. Um, but then he goes and plays it himself and gets super into it. <laughs> There is that type. Goodbye, perspective grid. I do not need you anymore. One more easy panel for me. Hee hee hee. Zara accidentally stays up all night playing it. Yeah, like the fucking sun starts coming up and like the others show up for work the next day and they're like, Captain, have you been awake this whole time? And he's like, what do you mean? They're like, Captain, it's it's 8 a.m. And he's like, ah, so it is. <laughs> and they're like, dude, were you up all night? And he's like, I guess I was. This day is going to be hell anyway. <laughs> he absolutely would. I feel like Zara is the type of person who would get like, he focuses very hard and then just like everything else kind of fades away. And then he's like, oops, I've been, I've been doing this for four hours. Like, I feel like that's the type of person that he is mentally when he's working on stuff. He just kind of gets in the zone. That's a ha that freaking happened to me last night. I don't even remember what I was doing last night. Something. And then I looked at my computer and it was like 10 p.m. I'm like, what the fuck? When did that happen? I thought it was like 6.30. What games do the rest of Zara's friends play? Oof. Good question. Um, hmm. Which one of them plays visual novels? I'm trying to think. Monster has been doing this to me. Oh man, Monster Hunter is fun. I need to stream it at some point. I just got to high rank last night. Um, but let me think. I feel like Terran plays detective games. <laughs> I'm not sure. I feel like he would he would try and be really bad. I feel like Terran would love them, but he but he'd have to look up a walkthrough like every single time. Who's the Phoenix Wright player? It has to be someone. I would say, okay, I'm imagining a scene where like Terran loves that type of game, but he's terrible at them. And so he keeps having, like he plays with Sonya or Liam next to him and they figure it out immediately. And he's just like, but who did the thing? And they're like, do you need a hint? And he's like, no, <laughs> I can figure it out. And then like Liam sitting next to him is like, didn't she say that she was over here instead? So that's a contradiction. He's like, don't tell me I can figure it out. <laughs> and then eventually when no one's looking, he consults a walkthrough because he's so stuck. My poor son. Although, hmm, I'm not sure if Taryn, like, I feel like Taryn would enjoy games with more action than that. Maybe he watches someone else play Ace Attorney because like, Hmm. I ca so, like, it's not an official character thing because I haven't really done my research on it to, like, act like accurately portray it in the story. Um, but kind of just in my head, I imagine Taryn as being dyslexic. And so he's just, like, doesn't really enjoy reading. And he's just like, I'm, I'm more of an action guy. All this paperwork just kind of uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, and so I'm not sure if he would have a good time with games that are mostly reading. I feel like he would enjoy the story, but he has to, like, play with someone else who can, like, do the character voices with him. Mm -hmm. 
Liam would probably like Professor Layton, though. Like the little puzzle games. He likes stuff that makes him think. Fucking love Professor Layton games, man. I'm sad that the new one apparently isn't great. I freaking love that franchise. I never played the final Professor Layton game of the main series because I just didn't want it to be over. Voice acting Ace Attorney makes it better in general. I, I would have to agree, yeah. Like, I freaking adore Ace Attorney. I've been into it since, like, the third game first came out. There was a Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton crossover. Yeah, I played it. It wasn't great, unfortunately. <laughs> In my opinion, like, there was stuff to love about it, but I f it felt like it was going halvesies on two great things. And it was a whole thing of, like, when you whole-ass one thing, it's good, but when you half-ass two things, it doesn't work out quite as well. The only reason I found out is because Adele's VA voiced Maya in that game. What? I didn't know that. What the heckies? New knowledge. <laughs> In a recent D&D game, we were trying to solve a mystery with some missing artifacts at a spooky museum, and I went full awful detective with my ranger girl and decided that the janitor did the crimes and started coming up with a whole ridiculous elaborate conspiracy. Turns out the janitor was responsible for one, and the rest of the party hated that I was partially right. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, that's hilarious. I love that. Solving crimes, conspiracy style. Jeez. My, my thing is like, I love like mystery stuff that's not blatant mystery. Like, I've never been big into, like, Scooby-Doo and that kind of stuff, like, where it's- uh, where the main thing is about solving the mystery. I like mystery as a subgenre, if that makes sense. Like, I love when you're in a story and there's mysteries to be solved, but, like, it's not a mystery genre story, if that makes sense. That's kind of what I end up writing unintentionally a lot of the time, because I really enjoy, like, intrigue of okay this character has something going on and we haven't learned enough about them yet but we're gonna slowly start to piece together what their deal is over the course of the story teapot imp thank you for the follow welcome to the stream squad i hope you're having a good day um but yeah because like i always write like i just enjoy writing plot twists and making people go what when stuff happens in a story I like doing big reveals, and so I kind of accidentally write mysteries into everything that I do. But I don't think I could ever write just like a straight mystery story. Um, with like fucking clues and whatever. I like consuming them. Like, I feel like Ace Attorney is the closest I get to that. Um. But I don't know. Like, I've never- I, I just like it when the mystery is not- the focus, I suppose. I enjoy mystery when it's, like, there, but not that it's an appetizer more than the main meal, if that makes sense. I'm making a lot of analogies over here. Three chameleons in a trench coat. <laughs> God, I fucking love that theory generator, man. It, it's kind of like, it hasn't been used in a while, but it's fucking gold. Oh man, so I was actually thinking about like some, some like, I guess you could call them fandom jokes from that era. Um, and the whole accountant AU that we came up with, that like just folks on the Discord were talking about. Do y'all know about how on TikTok now, accountant is a slang for someone who does like, internet pseudo sex work? <laughs> Like, like, if you, because the whole joke is that, like, if somebody asks you what you do for a living, you say you're an accountant. 
And they're like, oh, are you an accountant or are you an accountant? Um, and so now I'm thinking, oh yeah, Kassoff has an accountant, AU. Oh no. <laughs> Which version? <laughs> I got Shame Cube is actually Shame Cube on the theory generator. What? Plot twist. The big plot twist. Shame Cube was actually a cube all along. God, new new original character personality test. Which one sells feet pics on the internet? <laughs> oh no, I'm not gonna get into it with my kids because I don't think it's appropriate. But y'all can do that with your own characters on your own time. Also, just for the record, just gonna go ahead and put this out there. If you like selfie pics or do whatever the hell, more power to you, like, get that money. <laughs> Not the foot fetish joke from last stream. No, it keeps happening! It keeps happening, I'm sorry! Just the natural flow of conversation, I don't mean it. I mean, at least the good thing. I hesitate to say this almost because I feel like if I say it, I'm going to open up the floodgates. At least we haven't made any jokes about the Pringles guy this stream. So, so far, so good. <laughs> but now that I've said it, I feel like I'm opening up the floodgates. Frankie Peefy Tuber. Oh no! <laughs> Cute anime Frankie avatar that just kind of like bobs around. Frankie McPringles Leslie. Oh, no! <laughs> They're crossing all of the streams. All of them. Used to pass 600 seconds. Oh, shit! So I did! Oh, man, we missed the Satan number. Damn it. <laughs> it's cursed. <laughs> it's crossing too many streams. On my stream. My live stream. Oh, no. His V2 persona is him with a prick Pringles head. What? The hell would that even look like? Don't answer that question. I don't actually want to know. Here, I'm I'm abruptly changing topics. So Rory has like this little um, this little like bracelet. It's supposed to be like one of those like survival paracord bracelets. Um, that's kind of like what I had in mind for when I drew it. But I like just in my head, I call it her little shrimp bracelet because it kind of looks like a shrimp with the little shrimp tails. <laughs> That's how I draw it anyway. He's got a little shrimp bracelet. It's the wrong color. It's colored in blue, but maybe one day I'll make it shrimp color. Uh, Pringles are not flat. Pringles are Pringle shaped. <laughs> Excuse you. Okay, one more panel to ink on this page. Where the heck are you finding flat Pringles? <laughs> the Pringles factory. It's before they Pringle them. <laughs> Pringling is the process of making them that shape. That's what that whole repringling thing on Twitter was going on about a couple weeks ago. I'm joking. It was in my head. That's what it is. Pringling is the process of making Pringles into that shape, into that wiggle shape. I don't actually eat Pringles. They're okay as a snack. <laughs> I like the salt and vinegar ones, but they burn my mouth, so I can't eat them in large quantities. I mean, like, they are chips. I like them because they're not super greasy like some chips can be. Frankie, Frankie's stream handle is Pancake McPringles. Oh no, there's like an underscore between them. Frankie, like, Pancake underscore McPringles. <laughs> shrimp Rory. Rory is a shrimp. Oh no, I never thought about it like that. She is a shrimp and she wears shrimp. Oh no. <laughs> you hear that, Rory? 
You're a shrimp! She little. She's just a little shrimp. <laughs> She's shrimping. She's screamy shrimp! She go, ha! <laughs> She shrimp. She scream. I really liked Frankie's Instagram handle. Oh, thank you. From like the little dumb inst like faux Instagram comic that I made a while back. That was a fun, fun thing. Important question. What is that image in the top right corner? Oh, this? This is my, um, this is my color document that, um, it, it lets me like sample colors directly from it. So I don't have to, uh, so I don't have to like open up a bunch of different documents. And so it's got like all the flat colors for all the characters and like parts of the background laid out real easy so I can just click and grab click and like just color grab very easily without having to open up like a previous page makes my life a whole lot easier all the characters but they're blob yeah it's their blob sonas <laughs> it's like what if I looked like a blob what would I look like their blob sona you can do that in clip studio yeah it's great it's called the sub view tab highly recommend it so this is just like an extra document and you can like, so you can just like open anything in here. Um, and then you can just like grab from it. So I just have like an X, I have just have a spare Clip Studio paint file just laying around that has like all of my color character flats on it. It's very, very handy. And then pro tip. If you toggle, if you click on this toggle, like the little eyedropper toggle, um, that will make it so that when you hover, so I'm on my brush tool right now, you can see, uh, but then if this is activated, when you toggle over it, it, it automatically switches over to the, uh, the eyedropper tool. So that's how I do my flats really, really fast. It's just, I have the paint bucket out and then I just come over here and I don't even have to press any buttons. As soon as you hover over it and turns into the eyedropper tool, very, very fucking handy. I love it. I feel like that should be my next viral video on TikTok or whatever. Cause freaking every time I um I post like tutorials or whatever on TikTok, that's always the shit that blows up. And so I was like, hmm, my next viral video. I shall tell people about the glorious things about this program. And then they'll be like, what? I don't know what that character I just became was, but it happened. We don't need to acknowledge it. So much easier normally I have my navigation in that corner. Yeah, I have my navigation, so I have a screen tablet. And so I have my navigator blown up super duper big on my main monitor. And so I can draw looking down and then instead of zooming out every like 10 seconds, I can just, when I wanna see what the zoomed out version looks like, I just look up. Um, because then I can see my whole um, drawing in the big navigator window. Makes things much, much easier. But yeah, I um, I kind of stumbled into the whole PNG tuber um, uh, community, I suppose we can call it. Um, cause I just, I, I, I don't like using a webcam because I don't like having to make myself cute every time I stream. And so I just had my little like static character in the corner for however long, like years. But I'm like, you know, I just kind of woke up one day and was like, you know, I bet I could use my stream deck to like switch back and forth between these emote, like different emotions and how like a slightly more emotive, like little character icon. Then I went a little bit ham with it. And then when I made a video to show it off on TikTok, so a Several people asked for a tutorial, so I was like, okay, yeah, sure, here's how you do it. And I had to talk, like, really, really fast to get through the whole thing. Um, but then, now it has, like, over 100,000 views on TikTok, and somebody who was not me posted it on Twitter. Like, I posted it, and it got, like, 40 likes, and I was like, oh, cool, people like it. Uh, but then somebody else posted it on Twitter, and, like, I guess they're more into the whole, like, VTubing thing than me because it's, it's like, doing numbers over there now. And I've gained, like, 100 followers on Twitter in the last couple days from it. And I'm like, ah, neat. And so if anybody's here, like, I, my freaking average views have doubled since that video went online. So uh, if you're here following me after finding that tutorial, sup? <laughs>
I have the tips and the tricks and the sad boys. Look at them. I was here before you were cool. <laughs> well, you've been here a while as of several other people. <laughs> Thank you to old folks and new folks alike. I appreciate all of you. Don't be sad. He's just like, the boys are having, a, everyone's having a rough day, but the boys are in kind of a mood. They're going to form like a, a boy band pop group and they'll be called Sad Boys, but it's spelled B-O-Y-Z. <laughs> they all need a muffin and a nap. They do! They need muffins! Just stop adventuring for like two minutes and get yourself a fucking muffin and chill. <laughs> this is maybe like, here, I like to give hints for folks who bother to show up to my streams. Um, make yourself a muffin and chill is kind of going to be the topic of, uh, <laughs> the topic of next month's mail club as voted by patrons. But instead of muffins, I feel like it's probably going to swing towards pancakes because that's what everybody fucking wants to see. That is the content that the people want. Sweet Lemon, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream squad. I'm here from a Twitter repost of your PNG tuber tutorial. I can't be around that much because life stuff, so I'm just here to lurk. Thank you for lurking. I appreciate your presence. Do not feel obligated to hang out and chat if you are not comfy with that. We are chill here. But if you are just, like, this goes out to everybody. If you just want to lark, I'm totally okay with that. We want pancakes. See, everybody's freaking out about the pancakes. Yep, we've officially hit Bravely Default 2 music. We have reached that point in my stream playlist. It happens eventually. I'm comfy. I'm just cleaning my room. If I'm not in chat today, I will be another day. Well, whenever you feel like it, we will be here. Also, props for cleaning your room. Responsible humans. <laughs> Panic at the Bookshop is Vector's new band. Oh no, I love that. <laughs> Frankie wants it changed to Pancake at the Bookshop. <laughs> Y'all, stop giving me funny ideas to draw. I don't have enough time to draw the things I want to draw. It's my eternal curse. Cause like, I, I talk about this more on my private Twitter because I have my private Twitter that I use for just like bitching <laughs> and complaining about things mostly and nobody wants to see that except for me. Um, but one of the big things I complain about a lot there is just like, God damn it, I wish I had like a clone of me so that I could like have more time to draw things. And I could actually take commissions that people keep asking me for. And I could draw all the Bravely Default 2 ship art I want. <laughs> Clearly you need to roll more Katamari. I do! That's what we're gonna do on Friday. Because everybody wants me to play more Katamari. So we're gonna do it. That was the original plan for Friday anyway. It just kind of got bumped up a little because we finished Bravely Default 2 so quickly. Now you know. make all the stars. Yeah, I just need to clone me who can take commissions and then we can wrap up, we can just like rack up that sweet, sweet webcomic commission money. Because I keep, I keep thinking to myself like, man, I would love to do like VTuber commissions and have just like, or even just like little PNG tuber avatars because those are easy. Um, like I would love to do that because then um, like other people using my art as like their icon on stream, that's like a good mark. I feel like that would be a good marketing thing to like get more people interested in my art and I don't even have to do anything. Um, but then it's the problem of, oh, in order to take commission, you actually have to draw commission. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'll do the thing you do for your PNG, but my skeleton deal <laughs> is almost done. I love the phrase skeleton dealer. That's phenomenal. <laughs> oh man, I love that. That's incredible. I'm gonna start using that now. Who's your, bro, I love your icon. Who's your skeleton dealer? <laughs> I love it. I love that so much. <laughs> no, it's good. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Oh, it's incredible. 
a dealer who is a skeleton or a dealer who deals in skeleton? Uh, por que no los dos? A skeleton who also creates more skeletons. The skeleton dealer. And they just walk up to you and they're like, Yeah, you want some bones? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love that. I love that a lot, actually. Like, I got the art already, that's the flesh, so, like, the rig is the skeleton. It's the skeleton dealer. No, I, to I totally get where you're coming from. Like, I get it 100%. I just think the concept of a skeleton dealer is very funny. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Like, I am, I am familiar. I am familiar with the concept of VTubers and how that pr those programs work, because, like, I... I tried to teach myself live 2D and I got bored, so then I didn't. Um, just because, like, I knew I didn't want to use, uh, like, webcam, because I didn't, like, like I already said, I don't feel like bothering to make myself cute every time I go into stream. It's like, I don't feel like it. Um, and so I was looking into, like, possibly, like, drawing and rigging a um, VTuber avatar for myself for a while, but I just got intimidated by live 2D and I just ran away. Um, that's why I am a ping tuber now. Or as I called it previously, before I knew the word for PNG tuber, um, I'm a store brand VTuber. Walmart brand. Some people do both, would that make those people body dealers? I feel like there's a song with that as a lyric, and I'm probably remembering it wrong. But whatever. Hey yo, I'm the body dealer! You want a corpse? Here's one! <laughs> God. PNG tuber looks nicer to me. Yeah, that's the other thing. Is like now that I've actually made it, um, I kind of like the minimalistic animation because sometimes VTubers, um, like I'm not saying this to be mean, but just like sometimes depending on how they're rigged and what the art looks like, sometimes they can look a little bit uncanny valley. And sometimes like just like they either, if it's not phenomenal, sometimes it can just look a little odd. Um, and so I'm like, I. I'm just gonna draw a cute little picture and, and just have it animate exactly as much as I want it to. And then we can avoid, like, the whole looking like early PS2 graphics. Also, it's a whole lot easier and I can do it myself. I've seen a lot of very nice VTubers, but I've also seen some that, like, the... It's all in the eyes, mostly. One of my friend's avatars is a low-poly PS1 looking llama boy. What? That sounds cute. <laughs> Weird, but cute. Whenever I get a computer capable of powering a stream, I'll probably make a gift tuber. Yeah, it's fun. It's nice for me because, like, I'm not sure how my style would actually translate to, like, making a full VTuber. Um, like, avatar. And so with this one, it's just, like, it's nice, it's simple, it gets the point across, and I can switch emotions on it when I want to with my new finagle thing that I made. I felt bad. Some people on like TikTok and Twitter were asking me, how do you do this without a stream deck? And I'm like, I don't know, I have a stream deck. So that's how I figured out how to do it. Like, I'm sure there is a way, but I need somebody else to like figure it out because I don't want to figure it out because I already have mine figured out, you know? Like, I don't want to impose that limitation on me because I don't need to because I've got the stream deck. I'm a fancy, I'm a fancy bean. And also, I, I wouldn't even know where to start with, like, doing it without a stream deck, because that's how I figured it out. I don't know, I'm sorry. Drawing some beans. Speed drawing. My beans. Bean drawing. Speedy bean drawing. Achoo. I've seen a couple um, VTuber avatars, like, I guess it's like a new software that just came out that has like really, really accurate um, facial tracking. And you can get like such like cute smooshy faces with it and I love it, but apparently it's like either really expensive or really difficult to do and it takes a lot of computer processing power. Um, 
And so it's not something I'm looking into actively at the moment, but I, I'm excited to see how that technology develops because it seems like it's gonna be cool. My thing is like, I just wanna be able to get like goofy faces. Oh yeah, no, we're not talking about like the screen. We're talking about like how to make something work without a stream deck, which is the hard part. Cause like I've already figured out how to do like the little motion switcher with the stream deck. I, but people are asking me how to do it without a stream deck. And I'm like, I don't know, ask some, like you'll have to figure it out on your own. I'm sorry. I don't know, because I, I already have the stream deck, and so that's what works for me. Like, people were suggesting you could do it with code, but whenever I hear the word code, my, my brain explodes. So I really can't be any help on that front. I had a friend who coded my new website for me, and anytime I need to change something, I just email her. I'm like, Alyssa, help! Alyssa, help! <laughs> If I look at the code too long, it will spontaneously combust. Like, uh, there's a new website for webcomics going around that's like a webcomics news feed or something. That's not the actual name. But it's basically just like a webcomics RSS aggregator. Um, someone is actually working out a way to do PNG tuber with VC face. Um, that does emotions via facial recognition. That would be phenomenal! Once they get that figured out, I will totally learn how to use that, because that sounds cool. Um, but just like for right now, I'm happy with what I have for now. My good little, my good little bean. My other thing that's kind of like, it's not, not a turn off necessarily, but it's just like something that's kind of keeping me from going full VTuber, is that I have the hardest time making like, uh, What's the word? Like making a character icon that's not just what I actually look like, but a cartoon version. Because I think about like everybody else who has like, this is my character. This is the persona I do when I'm streaming. Like I, there's just something about that. I can't wrap my head around like making a separate character to play while I'm streaming. It's just like, it's either me or nothing. And like, I usually name myself Star in games because like, that's my actual name. We've discussed this already. Um, if whenever I have, whenever, um, whenever I like have character customization in game, I usually just make it look like me. Like in Pokemon, my character always has to actually look like how I do in real life. And if it doesn't, I freak out. Um, because I remember when I was playing, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield for the first time. I just, like, I modded my character and I gave her, like, my hair color and my eye color and my current hair length at the time. Uh, and I was like, maybe I should try something a little bit different because I see a lot of people doing, like, really cool things with their Pokemon customiz customizable characters. Um, and so I just tried changing the hair color of the character. And then I walked out of the salon in game and I was like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, and then I, like, went and immediately changed it back because it didn't feel right. I almost submitted my one art project as bisexual flowers. I can dump PNG. Ah, you should, you should, though. It'd be funny. Depending on who your teacher is and if they would be cool with it. Drawing bricks. Drawing bricks. Yeah, I guess the other reason that I kind of like stumbled into the whole PNG tuber thing, mostly through that tutorial, is just because I enjoy like futzing around with programs until I can get it to do the things I want to. And so like that, I I had, I had known how to do like the PNG tuber with just like one solid like icon before, but I was like, okay, well, what if we break this apart and then we can make it more customizable for my own purposes? Um, and I really enjoyed, like, 
figuring that out. It's kind of like the same reason why I like playing around with social media analytics is like, what do I have to do to achieve this result? And then I just play with it until it works. Um, and I, that's like the kind of thing that I can get very, very into. And so it's been fun. Also, we're done inking the first page. Oh, except that I need to draw bricks up here. Oh, Streamlabs is just going off right now. Go Streamlabs. Chill for me. Do my bidding. Chill for me, darling. Here, I'm gonna run and I'm gonna get a refill on my water really quick. I'm gonna mute my mic for a sec. I am back. I obtained water. And I also got a cookie. I got a cookie, everybody. I'm proud of me. Give me a minute to sip my water. Fitting victory music. Oh no, well now we have sad music playing. Cause I ate the cookie and now I don't have a cookie anymore. <laughs> Sad no cookie music. That feel when you don't get a cookie though. <laughs> Nothing sadder than not having a cookie, right? That's the worst. Always gotta have cookies. Okay, roof tile file, I don't need to anymore. I need page 16. Now I want a cookie. Get a cookie! Cookies are good for the soul. Okay. This one is very background light. Let's see if we can finish it in an hour before the stream is over. Speed drawing. Pachoo, pachoo! Confidence in your line work. Pachoo, pachoo! I maybe ate a whole box of cookies yesterday. You have reached cookie ascension! Just, just snarf that whole box. Oh shoot, it's almost Girl Scout cookie season, isn't it? Oh shit. I wonder if we're actually gonna get Girl Scouts around this year. Because of the whole everything that's been happening. You missed Girl Scout. What? No! Damn it! I thought it was like April-ish. No! I missed it! What the fuck? God damn it! Haha, <laughs> Arco. <laughs> yep, that's what's happening. That's gonna be the rest of the stream. I spent the first two hours on that first page, and I would love to finish inking these before the stream is over. I can play Monster Hunter when I'm done. 
I was a Girl Scout for 13 whole years. Ah, oh, shit, I was a Girl Scout for zero. I was never any kind of scout. No scout privileges for me. I don't know shit about cookie season. I just know that sometimes I go to the store and people are selling cookies. I live in Austin and already passed. Maybe some other areas have it still. I'm so mad. I missed cookie season. I want some freaking, I don't, they changed the name and I understand why, but what do they call Samoas now? They're like caramel delights or something. I don't know, but I love them. They're like the coconut ones, like coconut and caramel. And then they're like drizzled with chocolate. Oh, that's so good. I will just sit there in a whole dang box of them just by myself. Be like, these are my cookies. This is made for me. We still call them Samoas. Oh, yeah. Because I, um... <clears throat> um, last time I got them, the, they didn't call them that. Regionally, it varies. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, when I bought them, the box said Caramel Delights. Coworkers' kids were selling Girl Scout cookies before our office closed, and the office closed in mid-May last year. Yeah, I know it's like a spring thing, but I never actually, like, for real know when cookie season is. It always takes me by surprise. Now I'm sad, though! I missed cookie time! Ugh. I wasn't sad. And now I am sad. Because I missed cookie time. I didn't even know! I could have lived in blissful ignorance! What month is it right now? I don't know, I think it's like June. Probably. June sounds right. <laughs> it's just like how everybody in the Discord keeps trying to fuck me up with what day it is. It's like, oh yeah, happy Wednesday, and it's Saturday. I'm like, y'all, I already don't live in a timeline that makes sense. Why are you trying to make it worse? Ah. He's like, that's one of the troubles. That's just Skark's fault. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, I feel like other people get in on the joke, too, though. The Wednesday <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I had a thing I was gonna say, and now I don't remember. My birthday's in June. Oh, hey, so is mine! It's funny because, uh, my birthday is almost the same day as our D&D &D anniversary, because I ran our very first one-shot, like, the night before my birthday. And, uh, we were freaking out in the group chat today with all my D&D &D pals, who were just my- my friends. Um, and they were like, oh my god, you guys, it's almost been a year of D&Ding. And I'm like, yeah, it's easy for me to remember because the day before, it's right before my birthday. <clears throat> Back on the streamer gamer character topic, who would play Genshin Impact? Oh shit, I don't know. Uh, probably not Vector. Um, he probably, I don't see him being into gacha games. Um, hmm. Maybe Merino, just for the aesthetic. He likes, oh, it's pretty. Um, I'm not sure if any of them would like be super duper into it. <gasps> we sold lots of cookies outside a very sketchy grocery store, which led to me once asking a cop and a robber if they wanted to buy cookies. Cop was unamused, fun times. Oh my God, that's incredible. Like, hey, I know you just stole from this store, but do you want some cookies? You can't steal them, you have to pay for them. <laughs> oh man, incredible. My my rule about Girl Scout cookies is that I will buy cookies from anyone who asks. But you have to like be gutsy enough to ask me. It's like, hey, if anybody says, do you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? I will always say yes. Um but I see a lot of girls who just like just sit outside the store and I'm and, like don't just kind of like wave at me when they walk in and I'm like I'll wave back I'll be friendly, um, and but I I generally like will not buy any unless they specifically ask me because it's like it, it's maybe like as I'm saying it out loud it, maybe it sounds kind of douchey but it's like you gotta you gotta work and get that coin you gotta ask. Like, put in the legwork and I shall reward you, but 
I mean, sometimes I do still buy the cookies, like, even if they don't ask, because, like, I want some fucking cookies. But, like, if I am asked to purchase Girl Scout cookies, I will always say yes. Because it's like, yes, I will reward you for your courage of speaking to a stranger in order to acquire money in exchange for cookies. <laughs> Get him handcuffed and walked right out of the store past my <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I love this. Thank you. <laughs> I, if I was that cop, I would have fucking laughed because that's incredible. Just the energy. I love it. This advertises five boxes for 20 boxes or four dollars each. It's not a discount, but it sure was successful. I mean, yeah, that's like kind of basic marketing. Like people are more likely to buy something if they think they're getting a deal out of it. Robert said, maybe next year. Oh, <laughs> Can you imagine if the robber is just like, oh yeah, sure, wait one second. Like, they're in the process of getting arrested, but they still have, like, they convince the cop to let them pull over so that they can get some Girl Scout cookies. Oh, man. Like, I have never, I have never been in that situation and hopefully will never be in a situation where I am being arrested outside of a grocery store or other local business. But if I were, and a Girl Scout asked me if I wanted some cookies, I would still, by my moral obligations, have to say yes. And then I, I'm just imagining, like, what that conversation would sound like. He's like, hey, I know I'm being arrested, but, like, can we stop for just a second and we'll get cookies? Like, I'll share if you let me buy cookies. <laughs> He's arrested for stealing a six-pack of Mountain Dew. Doesn't even have good taste! If you're gonna steal something why would you steal mountain dew not even good oh shit spicy take on the stream i think he was a college brat frat bo frat bro sounds in character seems legit God, I want to keep talking, but my throat's kind of hurting from talking too much. I feel like this is the most conversational stream I've had in a while, just because there's so many people here helping my chat stay active. <clears throat> and I appreciate it, because having an active chat helps me be able to come up with things to talk about easier. But I just want to keep talking because we're having a good time. But now my voice is like, hey, you know that thing you're doing? Maybe stop. Another time at the same grocery store, some drunk guy sat down in our booth, in front of our booth with a donut and then passed out. <laughs> you think it would be bad for business, but it wasn't. What? That's incredible. People don't care. Um, people will ignore that in favor of getting some cookies. I don't blame them. I'd do the same thing. Take a cough drop. I don't have any! Why did he buy a donut and not our cookies? Though? That's a real question. <laughs> Maybe he just already had the donut. <clears throat> oh man, though. That just reminds me of this one time. When I was in college, my friends and I were mistaken for drug dealers by a dude who was certainly looking for drugs. <laughs> he got it from the store. Oh, well, then he's just a bastard man. <laughs> but yeah, I remember um, when my friends and I were in college, 
we were just goofballs. And sometimes, like, I, I forget exactly what the context, I forget why we were out that late. Um, but my friends and I, maybe we were, like, walking home from a school function or something. Okay, thanks for hanging out! Hope you have a good rest of your day or evening or whichever it is, depending on your time zone. But yeah, so, uh, we were, like, walking around. I think we'd, like, oh, you know what? I think maybe we'd gone to get dinner. Maybe it was after a school function, something like that. But we had just, like, a bag of, uh, like, yeah, that's what it was! We went to, like, uh, Five Guys for dinner. Because there was a Five Guys downtown in the town where I went to college. And uh, while we were walking back to our dorms, um, while we were walking back to our dorm, we kind of like stopped and just to like chill in one of like the little squares. Because I went to school in Savannah, Georgia, and there's like little parks and like tiny, tiny like little like greenery filled um, little areas like every couple blocks. And so I think we were just like giddy and we were having a good night. And so we just kind of like stopped. It was like probably like nine or ten o'clock at night. Um, maybe a little earlier. It was definitely dark out is the important thing. And we were all just kind of goofing around and we like walked through one of the parks and at one point we just kind of like, we were like, dude, it's so empty. Let's just like stop and like chill for a little while here and like finish our burgers. And so we like sat there and we were like eating french fries out of like this greasy french fry bag and like reading creepy pastas off our phones to each other, but like the really bad kind. And this dude just like walked up to us and I forget exactly what he said, but it's because it's been years. But just based on the vibe of what he was saying, he I feel like he definitely thought that we we had like weed and that we could share some of our weed with him. But unfortunately for him, all we had were French fries. We did give him the French fries, though. We were like, oh, we don't have anything like that, but we've got a bag full of cold French fries. And he was like, I'll take it. And I'm like, here you go. Here's some French fries. <laughs> This game has a haunted level that contains photos of dead children type of creepypasta. No, worse. You're thinking too large. You have to go stupider. I'm talking like hook man hand car door hand man level creepypasta. <laughs> but if her father was dead for 10 years, then who was phone? And we were reading them like in that exact tone of voice. <laughs> We were doing that shit just in a public location at like 10 o'clock at night when tourists were walking past us. Going to college in a tourist location was always fun because we got to like weird out the tourists. Um, there was a thing I started doing that all my friends started doing. Like, so we would be waiting at the bus stop for like our just school bus. It would like ferry us around the city. And we always had tour buses, like city tour buses would like drive past our bus stop and we'd always get stared at by the tourists. And so my friends and I, when we were waiting for the bus, we would start like every time a tour bus would go by, we would all like applaud for them and be like, Whoa, yeah, you're on a tour bus. Woo! <laughs> just for no reason, just because it was funny. And um, we, it was always great when like they would acknowledge our existence and like just acknowledge that we were being fucking weirdos. I remember the best interaction we ever had with the tour bus. Like when we would start screaming and cheering for them, most people would just kind of like avert their eyes and pretend like we didn't exist. Um, but the, I remember once there was this old lady who just did like, she saw us clapping and she just like double like fists in the air, just went, what? And we, that of course got us even more energized and we like all like five or six college freshmen were just like, fuck you, woo, tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was awesome. We started doing that because they would stare at us like we were a museum exhibit. You know, like they would stare at us like we were animals in a zoo. And I'm like, this is stupid. They keep staring at us like we're weird. Let's make them feel even weirder about it. <laughs> you know? So we didn't do it much, but when we did do it, it was fucking funny. I work at a college that's pretty much a tourist attraction and trying to cross campus while waiting through crowds of tourists is fun. Oof, yeah, understandable. 
Thankfully, Savannah tourists aren't awful. I'm getting emails. Every day I get emails. <laughs> Um, is that a voicemail alert that just went off? It was! Oh, I have a feeling I know what that- or maybe not. Maybe not. Who's leaving me voicemails? Yeah, it's exactly who I thought it was. <laughs> so I have my phone set up so it just doesn't even ring if it's an unknown caller because I get so many, um, like, spam calls. But it means that I've been waiting on an important, like, actual real-life phone call. I keep missing their calls because I don't know that they're calling me. Because they call me from just, like, big corporate numbers that I obviously don't have on my contacts. And I can't tell them apart from the spam because it's always a different state that their phone number is from. And I'm like, y'all, come on. Anyway. <clears throat> I am now hydrated. It is time to go back to draw. <clears throat> I'm about a third of the way through inking my drawing. I doomed myself into inking a million flowers that I don't actually know how to draw very well. My secret for that is to just like draw one cluster of flowers and then copy paste it all bunch. I could ruin some of my older pieces for you guys by pointing out exactly where I did that. I kind of don't want to, but I also kind of do. So I'm looking at the mail club prints, the August mail club print from last year, the one where it's like Marina and Vector in a flower field. I just drew like one little chunk of those flowers, like that little section in front of them. And I just copy pasted it a million times for like all the flowers in the background. And then, I mean, being traditionally, oh, that I have no help for you, I'm sorry. Um, but then when I did the, uh, the Frankie tarot card and he was in a field of flowers, I, it's the same fucking flowers. <laughs> I just, I legit just copy pasted it because I couldn't be bothered to like draw different more flowers. Could not be bothered. Like why would I draw flowers when I have already drawn flowers in the past? Why would I do this again to myself? Say hashtag same flowers. I will never draw anything again because I've already drawn everything that I need to draw. I will just copy paste forever on my whole life. <laughs> Sorry that I'm ruining this music for you. I just get really into it sometimes. Good jams. Revo's a fucking genius. What about it? They are definitely the same flowers. See, I told you! I told you. Fucking copy-paste, man. Saving me hours. Started going full control, I'll delete. I don't think I'd ever get to that point, but just like, weird small details? I don't need to draw flowers again. I've already drawn flowers. But see, that's the type of thing where, like, you wouldn't notice if you weren't actively looking for it. Therefore, it is fair game to just copy-paste it and save myself three hours of drawing flowers again. I 
I feel like I need to play this music over Monster Hunter fights when I'm playing that game. Maybe it will help me get into it more. Because Monster Hunter is my go-to game when I'm just like listening to a podcast and want something to do with my hands. Because it involves so little brain power, really. You just go in, do a fight. Harvest the items you need when you win the fight and then do it again. And like, there's fun music in Monster Hunter, but it's not like music that I would listen to outside of playing the game. Like, the main theme is always really fun. I remember the first time me and my friends cosplayed Monster Hunter. Um, we, like, they made a whole bunch of, like, big-ass props. And one of the weapons from Monster Hunter is called the Hunting Horn. And different ones look like different instruments, but it always, like, you play music with it and it does stat buffs, and that's how it works. And, um, so when we, they made, like, a big prop hunting horde and we hit a speaker inside of it, and then we played music on it all day. And I just remember the look, like, we, those were co competition costumes that we made, like, we put a lot of love and detail into those. And, um, I just remembered we walked into the judging room with with our own theme music blasting out of this actual like musical instrument weapon and the judges all freaked out and we were like oh hell yeah presentation baby <laughs> oh man that was fun i miss cons specifically for like things like that like that kind of stuff is what i love about cosplay it's just presentation but also just running around in a cute outfit. That's also fun. Where, like, nothing beats, like, walking into a fucking judging room with your own theme music because it, it's appropriate. I love it. Mwah, chef's kiss. Did you miss Con Plague? I've never had Con Plague, so no. I have a very strong immune system and I've never gotten sick after a convention. I've gotten sick right before a convention, but that was just like, I get really bad allergies in the summer sometimes. And that fucking sucked. But didn't ruin my con. Was still able to do all the stuff I wanted to do. my favorite Rory face on this page. She's just like, Hermph. She little and she hermph. She's an angry shrimp. She grumpy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> shrimp is grump. Shrimp has also had a bad day. That vector face is very cute. Thank you. He's just having some thoughts. This is the face he makes when he's having when he's having to think, having to sit, having to think, like you do. Me of the hi, I'm Grumbari on a meme. Yeah, that was a while, a while, a while ago. That was like, I think I drew that in chapter two, which would have been like four years ago at this point. It's an old picture. 
but a classic. God, I love this song. I feel like Gloria's theme is kind of underrated in this game. Because, like, we've got the epic guitars, we've got the smooth jazz, we've got the trumpets, but fucking Gloria's theme is also, it's really pretty. It's just as epic as the rest of them. Do you like the Bravely Default or Bravely Default 2 soundtrack more? Um, I kind of like them both for different reasons. Um, like, listen, nothing is ever going to top the character themes from the first game. Because, like, fucking loves Vagrant. Like, holy shit, I love that song so much. Um, but also just, like, a lot of just, like, the ambient so songs from Bravely Default 2 are really good. Like, don't make me choose between them. I can't. They're both good. Bravely Default I've just, like, had in my brain longer, and I've used it as, like, my writing background music for years. Um, Bravely Default 2's soundtrack just feels kind of like a more refined version of the first one. Um, like, oh, like, the game overall as a whole just feels like a slightly, like, aged and more mature... Like, it's a more refined version of what the first game was in, like, almost all areas. I feel like the character designs and, like, the outfit designs for the asterisks feel a little bit less, like, silly fantasy and more like, oh, this is actually something that a person would wear. By comparison to the first game, there's still some very silly ones. But I feel like Red Mage is a good example, because, like, the Red Mage from the first game were very, very, like, they were fucking, like, Fabio outfits. They were, like, super smooth, and I still love them. And then the Red Mage from the new game was very toned down, but, like, still very cool looking. Looks at Beastmaster. Listen, I said, no, you know what? Fucking Beastmaster is a toned down version, because you know what Beastmaster was in the first game? Fucking fursuit. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> Like in like for Beastmaster you just have like ears and tail, but like whatever like Ranger or whatever the hell it was in the first game, literal like whole fursuit head. I'm not joking. Look it up. So yeah, I stand by my point. <laughs> Actually. Like if you think there are out like there are silly outfits um in Bravely Default 2, I would simply like to point you to Bravely Default 1. <laughs> because if you think that the outfits in 2 are silly, well then my friend, you have not seen some of the bullshit they made us wear in the first game. Because damn. How much time do I have left? 30 minutes? Ah! I'm probably not going to be able to finish this page before this dream is over, but it's okay. Isn't there an actual Elvis Presley outfit in the first? Yes! There is! The, like, the performer asterisk, their version of the bard outfits. Like, the girls have little pop idol outfits. Um... And, like, there were legitimate, like, Elvis Presley cosplays in the first game. Like, look, look up Bravely Default Performer Asterisk. I'm not joking. It had like the art, like the arm and leg tassels and everything. I wish we could see Elvis dressed as Elvis. God, that's another fucking thing I need to draw. One more for the pile. 
Because, like, as much as I love the bard outfits from this game, I need Elvis dresses Elvis properly. <laughs> I found the ranger from Bravely Default. Yeah, it's it's Buck Wild, isn't it? <laughs> Bravely Brainworms. Yeah, that's that's my current condition. I'm in Bravely Default hell. I have no desire to be out of it. Let me vibe. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to post a link, unfortunately. Because um, I've got my bot set up so it doesn't allow links. But just if anyone's curious, go look up uh, Bravely Default Ranger. Because damn. I love cast off your art style, so awesome. Oh, thank you! Welcome to the stream! I hope you are enjoying yourself. How the hell am I gonna make it so this looks good? Wow. How? That's good enough. First Bravely Default was a delight. Like, I didn't play it until years after it came out. Um, because a friend lent it to me. And then I just fell so hard in love with it that I ended up giving her back her copy of the game so that I could buy it for myself. But I had already put, like, 25 hours in on her cartridge, so I had to replay, like, the whole first 24 hours of it. But I did it anyway. Because I loved it that much. My voice is starting to go. This is bad. Uh, what music are you listening to? Uh, this is a Bravely Default 2 soundtrack. Unfortunately, I got the songs. I ripped them all from the CDs and they still have the Japanese titles. <laughs> yeah, up in the chat for my voice. <clears throat> She is leaving, friends. Look at this grumpy little shrimp. Look at her. Okay, I need to take another bathroom break. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. Time, go! I'm back. The one downside to staying hydrated is that you have to pee so much. Sorry for the TMI. I'm just living in my truth here. I took you 90 seconds. Damn it! It took time to get to my bathroom. <laughs> and also I had to stop and look at my cat for a few seconds. Because she was laying on the floor in my room being cute. Mm. 
my cat likes to lay on the floor of my bedroom in the afternoons. Because I get a lot of sun through one of my windows in there. And so she likes to lay in the little sunbeam and it's very cute. But then she'll just lay there until the sun is completely gone and there's no more sunbeam. And I'm like, cat, the... There's no more sun for you to lay in. Why are you still in here? And she's like, oh, I don't know. I'm a cat. I do what I want. <clears throat> did you ever play Bravely Second? I did. I've forgotten most things about it because I only played it once. And I just remember just kind of not being fully satisfied with it after the first. I think the music was a big part of it. Just because like, oh, man, they changed the composer. It just didn't hit as hard as the first one. For me to do a proper analysis of it, I'd have to actually go back and play it again. It's been so long, I don't remember. Yeah, I played Bravely Second, but, like, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I just think it's funny that, like, um... I So I have my, like, my my merch request form um, that I use. Like, if, if people want to request, like, I make certain things, um, I keep that form open so that they can, like, ask me for things if they want to. And ever since I started doing my Bravely Do... or Bravely Default 2 um, merch, I've gotten so many requests to do uh, you and Magnolia from that game. Just because, like, I have the pro tags from the first game, I have the pro tags from two, um, but I never, I kind of skipped the Bravely second crew because, like, I'm not as attached to them. But now that I've started doing Bravely Default 2 stuff, like, the, the Bravely Default fandom has awoken, and they've, like, they're like, hey, I, I know you did these, but would you ever do Bravely second stuff? Because there's, like, nothing. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm just not suit as much into those characters. Like they're cute, but I'm kind of indifferent about them to be honest. <laughs> the five bravely fans have found you. All five of them, they're here. They've come for me. I was so sad. I looked up Bravely Default 2 on Etsy and there's fucking nothing. And I'm like, there's not even my stuff because I haven't, um... I haven't put my Bravely Default 2 stuff up on my Etsy shop yet because, um... I'm, I've been out of Adele and I would feel bad. Um, I'm getting more in stock though. Um, I've made the order with my supplier and they should he be here by the end of the month. Yeah, the game's been out for a month and a half. So you'd think there would be more stuff on it, because, like, fan artists tend to jump on that shit, but not this time. Oh yeah, fourth the fourth wall breaks, like... That's kind of always been a thing. I don't. I didn't remember like this a wholesale file, save file shenanigans from the first one or the second one. Like I said, I I've forgotten most things about Bravely Second. I remember Bravely Default one much better because I played it multiple times. I just got super duper into it. I actually cosplayed Ring a Bell way back in the day. Um, because I, I was so fucking in love with him, and I was like, I need somebody else to cosplay Ring a Bell so that I can be a Dia, and then we can just like wander around a con together. But then I was like, wait, what if I cosplayed Ring a Bell and then I got a friend to be a Dia, and then same thing. Except I get to be my cute son, and then I did. Yeah, I, I like I love a deal with my whole heart, but just something about Ring a Bell. He's dumb and I love him. Does Ring a Bell ring a bell? You joke! That's why he's named that. He has amnesia. <laughs> That's why he's named that. <laughs> Does my name ring a bell? No! 
That's my name now. <laughs> like the fucking conversation. <laughs> like that's why he's called that. There's pun names. In all the games, people think that Elvis Leslie was the first? No! There's a character with amnesia named Ringabel! And another main character named Idea Lee. Like, you know, like ideally. And like her dad's name is Brave Lee. And her mom's name is Mazer Lee. Like, what the fuck, game? <laughs> Elvis Leslie is just so bad, I kind of hate it. No, it's fun! It, like, it's grew on me a lot. Like, I feel like between the costumes from the first game and the fact that there's a character named Elvis Leslie, um, I feel like somebody on the staff is a really big Elvis fan and they're trying to see how unsubtle they can make it before people start to catch on. Bingus. Bingus is best boy. We love Bingus in this house. Yeah, Frankie panic. Look at him go. When Bravely Squared comes out, there will be actual Elvis Presley music in the soundtrack. <laughs> it would not surprise me if I'm being honest. It's like they convince Revo to do like an Elvis Presley parody in the actual soundtrack. Were you able to get used to the new combat in Bravely Default 2? Yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I didn't play the demo, though, so that didn't really color my perspective because I did not play it. I skipped the demo because I, I was not excited about the game at all until I actually picked it up and then it just swooped in and was like, Hey, guess what? Welcome to hell! And I was like, oh no, I'm here forever. I still can't believe that the game sucked me in quite as much as it did. I was not, it just came, I guess I can't say it came entirely out of left field because like I was a fan of the original game. But once they announced Bravely Default 2 with like an entirely new cast of characters, I was so turned off, like I didn't even play the demos. Game is here. Here is Elvis. Star, this game is perfect. I mean, yeah. Because I mean, just like looking at pictures and watching the trailers, I was like so uninterested. I'm like, where are the actual characters game? Um, excuse me, where is Ringabel? Where's the deal? Where are my kids? Where are they game? And so like, I just kind of bought, I bought Bravely Default 2, like before, I didn't even play the demo. Um, I just kind of bought it out of obligation and also I was bored and I didn't really have any other games. Um, but then it, within an hour, I was fucking, okay, I love this immediately. This is actually very good and I'm stoked about it. <laughs> Bap. Yep. <laughs> Bap is a sound effect that I put in there so that I would remember to add it as a sound effect once I actually draw the page for real. Yeah, now it's Rory's turn to punch. Ariana's had enough time in the punch spotlight, now it's Rory's turn. She 
she's like, yeah, I can be the new punch character. All I gotta do is punch, right? Yeah, if you try and punch Frankie, you're just gonna break your hand. <laughs> just going for it. Yeah, basically. Just like, I have an idea. I can replace Ariana in this storyline. I can punch things too. See, look, here comes my punch. Lady Chrono, hello! Welcome to stream. What's up, everybody? It would hurt. Yeah, Frankie is like, he's a... <laughs> he's a junkie boy! <laughs> I don't know why that was the first adjective that came into my head. But it's, it is what it is, and we're just gonna live with it now. That's how Rory finds out Frankie's secret. She just punches him and he breaks her hand. Like, oh no, secret's out. I'm a hunky boy. jam to this music now, trying to rest my voice a little bit. So one of my- so you guys want me to tell you one of my secret art things that you will never be able to unsee once I say it? I'm gonna tell you anyway, but I'm asking to make it seem like you have a choice in the matter. So whenever I draw Rory's little overalls, like on the front here, I always, 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 always see it as two eyes and a big ol' smiley mouth. It's like, yeah! Because <laughs> she just got her little overalls on. It's just a face that goes, Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> just the happiest overalls you ever did see. <laughs> so, like, even, even in the future when there's, like, big dramatic scenes involving Rory, she's still going to be wearing these fucking overalls that just the whole time are going, Yay! <laughs> Rory's overalls are the newest cast member. Oh no! Guys, what do we name her overalls? Because they need a name, apparently. We, got, we can't have a member of the cast-off cast without a name. Listen, the overalls are down for whatever the fuck Rory wants to do. It's like, yeah, you want a bunch of guy? Let's do it! Wow! Or, oh, hey, you want to steal some shit? Hell yeah! Like, the overalls are the ultimate enabler. And they're just like, yeah! Yeah, do it! I'm your overalls! I've got little button eyes and I love to scream! <laughs> God, I feel like I've become a, a different, stupider person when I'm live in front of people. I just say things. Oh, yeah! I'm ready to commit crimes! <laughs> Let's do some fucking crimes! <laughs> All right. Okay, that's 
quite enough of that, I think. It's the crime brawls. I love committing felonies! Yay! <laughs> I ship crime overalls with shame cube. Oh no, the ultimate inanimate object pairing. That's the OTP for my comic. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. The crime overall said it. I was just passing along their message by channeling their spirit into my soul. <laughs> You can't arrest me for that. That's hearsay. I think is how that works. I've been watching a lot of Legal Eagle and I have not entirely mastered the terms yet. The law terms. I just like that kind of his kind of videos are like my favorite genre of videos. Where people who are very good at things explain things to me who is not good at things. <laughs> It's so like, dude, just like watching movies and talking about it. It's like, no, that's illegal. That's not how you would do that. And I'm like, hmm, hmm, I see. I understand. Thank you. The Savalon theme is a banger. Listen to it bang. Bang, 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 bang. Now that's just in the chat. He's like, ah, oh, I love committing felonies! Yeah! This is a dumb fucking voice. That's just like my new character, Crime Overalls. <laughs> why won't you let me do crimes, Faith? God damn it, why won't they let me do crimes? Commit a felony, Rory! Yeah! <laughs> Oh, that's what that fucking voice is. I was like channeling a character just now and I couldn't think of what character I was trying to do. It's... <laughs> oh god, now I have to say it out loud. It's, um... Anybody who does not know the Rejected Cartoon series is going to think I'm an absolute maniac when I say this next bit. That voice I was doing is very much the Oh God, my anus is bleeding character from the Rejected Cartoon series. Oh, for the love of God! And all that is holy! Like, it's the same character. That's what I was doing. Like, I was just doing that voice without remembering what it was from. But now I remember. <laughs> and anyone who doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about is going to be very, very confused. And I'm sorry about that. Just look up rejected cartoons on YouTube later. <laughs> Pardon? Here, hang on. Hang on. I bet I can find it if I just YouTube it really quick. Because I forget the name of the dude who does it. Rejected cartoons. Don Hertzfeld! That's who did it. Rejected co rejected commercials. These are like fucking 13 years ago on YouTube. Hey, yo, what? <laughs> Here. Here. Um, where's the... Okay, this is the one that's on his actual channel, so I'll link you guys to that one. So Rejected Cartoons is a series. Um, um, does this one, like, tell you the backstory at the beginning? I think it should. Yes. So basically, um, the Family Learning Channel... Here, I'm dropping it in the chat. Um, Family Learning Channel apparently commissioned this artist to do a bunch of like little TV spots and they rejected all of them. So it's like a series of rejected cartoons. As for why they were rejected, it will become clear very, very quickly. <laughs> they are largely inappropriate. So if you're watching them with, with like children in the room, maybe don't. <laughs> Because there's some shit in that video. But we... That was like... I remember watching those in like high school. When YouTube was was new. And it, it definitely influenced my humor from the time. No, 
for the love of God! I, I just dropped so many viewers because I feel like everyone's gonna go watch the rejected cartoon video I linked. <laughs> I'll just give you guys a few minutes to go watch that. <laughs> like half my viewership just disappeared because they're gonna go watch a video. I love it, it's fucking funny. think I'll pass. Well, you can hang out with here with me then and wait for everyone to come back. That video is 10 minutes long. If in 10 minutes everyone comes back, I'm gonna laugh. I'm not sure if I'll be streaming in 10 minutes. Um, we'll see. I'm more interested in Rory and her crime overalls. Well, I was making a reference, so if folks want to understand the reference, then that's what that video is for. I reference that shit all the time. Not as much as I used to, but I definitely still do. Classic. Classic star, star like, 2010 humor. So I'm going to play a game of chicken with myself where I see if I can finish inking these pages and end the stream before my brother gets home from work. I wonder what the kids are talking about. Crimes! Probably. Yay! Let's do some fucking felonies! Yay! <laughs> getting there. I'm getting there. There's a lot of dialogue on this page. It's kind of a pain trying to fit it all. Vector is a crime just by con existing. Oh no, my son! He is a crime! Unintentional crime, Lord. Vector. Vector is actually the evil mastermind behind the whole storyline. He's just very good at covering it up. A bean. But he's also a crime lord. <laughs> lord of crimes. Oh ho ho ho. Crime Lord Vector. New AU. Mafia boss Vector and all of his underlings. Vector never really changed from your first draft where he was Discount Lelouch. That's the best thing to call him, though! Like, original draft Vector was such a fucking edgelord. Get September's sub picture, yup! Yup, September's mail club. Mafia boss. Discount Lelouch is very, very good, because, I mean, you're not wrong, it's basically what he was. It was fantasy Lelouch. He did do a murder. Maybe current Vector is just paying for the crimes of past Vector from the original drafts.
<laughs> I'm still just watching my view count, waiting for if people are going to come back after finishing that video, because it's been like four or five minutes now. Oh, I just jumped right, up, right back up to 16. Did you guys finish the video? <laughs> Probably not, but it, I'm just like watching my view count and laughing. It's like, it's so easy to see the patterns. I can't wait for that Patreon video where you talk about old cast off drafts. Same! It's basically just going to be like me compiling like all of the old shit. Um, that I talk about on stream all the time into, like, a single video for easy digestion. I want to hear about Centipede Vector. I'm- I'm so sad that the original clip of Centipede Vector got, like, taken off of Twitch for some reason. I'm so sad. Because it was definitely a Twitch clip from, like, four years ago. And I guess at some point it just got removed from the website. And I'm sad about it. it. Sounds extremely cursed. It was! It was extremely cursed. Spoiler alert. It was basically just like a... The, the cause was like it was a different version of how his powers worked in an earlier draft. I'm not sure how much I want to elaborate on that point, but it was just, like, slightly different variations of how, like, the character's powers manifested. And I changed it because I didn't want to have to learn how to draw a centipede. <laughs> That's not why. I changed it because it was stupid. Um, but also that. That I didn't want to draw a centipede. He grows too many legs! Yep. Every time he teleports, he gets two new legs. I hope that's actually what it was. It's not, unfortunately. That was just me joking, but God, imagine. It's like, you can use this ultimate power to, like, save your life, but it'll cost you the fact that every time you do, it gets harder and harder to find pants that fit you. Because you just have two new legs every single time you use it. That feels like a would-you-rather um, question. Where it's like, would you, or like, just like, powers with a price or something. Like, would you want the power to teleport if every time you teleported, you grew two new, you grew a new pair of legs? Like, in addition to your first one. It's kill time. Yeah, the, you just learn how to use skirts. Skirts don't care how many legs you have. Star Pritchard, 2019. It's not 2019, it's 2021. What the fuck? <laughs> what year is it? I don't know. Ah! <laughs> Vector in a kill with too many legs. It's it's just like that, uh, it's like that Little Mermaid cartoon. Where it's like, how many legs do humans have? I think eight. <laughs> it's like, but but dude, she has eight legs. Seven vaginas. <laughs> Maybe more. <laughs> have you guys you guys have seen that, right? I really hope you guys have seen that. Otherwise I sound like a maniac once again. For like the fifth time during the same stream. It's getting worse. No! I'm just referencing funny things that other people have made. What's the name of the fucking guy who, um... Oh, Jesus. What's his fucking name? Uh, I don't remember what the guy's name is. 
fuck. I'm, I'm blanking completely. I'll post it in the stream chat when we're done. I can't think of it right now. Neil Cesariga, that's who it fucking is. Little Mermaid, Neil. Yes, thank you. Good. Okay. No, I don't want to save it, I want to share it. Copy. I'm dropping another video into the chat. This one's a lot shorter. Neil Cesariga, Ariel needs legs. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Internet as a whole. <laughs> We're just delving into like all the videos I loved in college and now apparently. Just all the dumb shit I used to watch and still love. And I'm not spending too much time on this Frankie arm because, like, it doesn't matter that much. And I'm just going to need everyone to, like, not acknowledge it. And maybe it will look nicer. I watched this a while back and tried to forget. Surprise! It's back! In unexpected places. Centipede Vector versus Discount Lelouch. Who wins in a fight? Honestly, probably Centipede Vector. I'm talking like, okay, so you have to understand. When I say Centipede Vector, I don't mean that he transforms into a small centipede. Giant, bigger than a person centipede. Like, is what Centipede Vector was. Like, monster size centipede. Like, Discount Lelouch doesn't have shit on Centipede Vector. Like, not quite kaiju-sized, but bigger than centipedes are supposed to be, right? I would say probably, like, smaller than a T-Rex. Probably about, like, roughly the size of two cars. Like, one in front of another. That's how big Centipede Vector was. It's like a big, big beefy boy with many, many legs. This is so cursed. <laughs> Listen, I changed it for a reason. I need you all to understand how cursed the early drafts were. All right. <laughs> Centipede Vector. He's on a mission. He has many legs for the job. <laughs> and this is Vector who would do this. Yeah, I know! I wrote it! I know how fucked up it is. Trust me. Trust me. This shit is bonkers. I, I'm well aware. I'm just gonna take this sketch layer and just... ...scooch it over a little bit. I would love for Frankie to be like the center of attention in this panel based on what's happening in it. I get to draw some more perspective lines. Sounds like everyone was right to be terrified of him. I mean, he wasn't a centipede all the time. Just sometimes. Occasional centipede. Infrequent centipede. Part-time centipede. Timeshare centipede. Temporary centipede. 
<laughs> Vector Jacob's part-time centipede. Put that on his fucking resume and go cr try and get a job. And future potential employers would be like, Hey, why did you write part-time centipede on your job application? And then he'd have to explain, Oh yeah, I can turn into a centipede, but only sometimes. And they'd be like, you what? <laughs> you what, mate? <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's weird. Uh, don't ask too many questions about it, because I don't feel like explaining it, because it's going to get weird. And they'd be like, duly noted. I just need everybody to remember that if you go into a job interview... They legally cannot ask you questions about your centipede form. You do not have to elaborate that you can turn into a giant centipede in a job interview. That is personal information that they don't need to know. <laughs> you can do your job just fine without your bosses and other employers knowing that you can turn into a centipede. You are not legally obligated to give out that kind of information. <laughs> Good to know for future job interviews. See? I'm helping society. <laughs> this is me helping. This is the sound of me helping. They cannot disqualify you from a job just because you can turn into a centipede. <laughs> Though why did he put it on his resume to begin with? Because he's a good boy and he's too honest about his centipede problems. <laughs> Vector is a good, honest boy who gives out too much information about his centipede powers. If that gets clipped, I'm putting it on TikTok. I feel like that's the energy I need to bring to my internet presence. Just with no context. He's like, why is Star talking about being able to turn into a centipede with no reason behind it? I'm like, you know, it's just kind of the energy I bring to the room sometimes. He'd be a good, honest centipede, exactly, because he's a good boy. A good boy with just a comical amount of legs. Anyway, it's Wednesday. What are you guys up to aside from... <laughs> Is there something you need to tell us? No! I'm not legally required to give you that information. You suck it. <laughs> Trawler start. It's just a regular Thursday when you turn into a centipede. Listen, uh, it's Wednesday. Unless you're in a different time zone, in which case I guess it is Thursday. I will not confirm nor deny that I can turn into a giant centipede. Currently, I no, I cannot turn into a I will not confirm or deny whether or not I can turn into a centipede. And we're going to leave it at that. You have no proof of my secret centipede nature. This is slander. Uh, no, actually, in print, it's libel. It is libel on the internet talking about my, my centipede. I mean, my, my alleged centipede activities. Um, oh, Jesus. Oh, that may have fucked up the stream a little bit. My, my tablet stream, dis my tablet screen disconnected for a hot second. Does the stream still work? Are we good? You hit play real quick so I can be sure that we're still good. Okay, we're good. I had to like, my my tablet became disconnected for a hot second. I was worried that it was gonna fuck up the stream. Cool, we're good. What activities does a centipede do? You know, leg. <laughs> Leg as a verb. <laughs> Vector big centipede prank. 
<laughs> Stop! We can't keep doing this. Chat, we can't keep doing this. Centipede! Pringles! No! <laughs> God, I just keep making references to things that I have to post videos to make people understand. Now my tablet's being all wacky. I talk too much about centipedes. Matt Chu draws, thank you for the follow. Sorry that you walked in on an absolutely chaotic conversation. She starts this cursed chat, then blames up for bringing Pringles into it. You did blame bring Pringles into it! No one was talking about Pringles until Evgen Marenth posted more Pringles bullshit. <laughs> it's you guys' fault. I have done nothing. Me and my, my many, many legs, my alleged many other legs, have done nothing to deserve this foul treatment. <laughs> This would be a wonderful time for my brother to get home from work and then just start questioning what the fuck I was doing while he was gone. Santa Pringles, oh no. You guys, can't you see that I have comics to work on? I can't sit here and talk about Pringles all day. And centipedes? I feel like I'm creating a name for myself as that one, that one streamer who talks too much about Pringles and centipedes. People are gonna th come into my stream and they're gonna th think I'm weird. <laughs> when he asked what you were doing, just tell him leg. <laughs> Why? Because that's an activity that centipedes do? And you think I'm a centipede? <laughs> They're losing my fucking mind over here, you guys. <laughs> what the f Why do all of my art streams become this way? <laughs> What the fuck? God, I might have to end the stream slightly early. I think briefly disconnecting has like wigged out my tablet and now it doesn't know what's going on. I'll finish drawing this Frankie face and then I think we're gonna call it for the night. Because my tablet's being, like the pen's being weird and laggy now. It's all broken. Not any other reason. <laughs> I promise I'm not making excuses. My tablet's just being weird. I think I might need to restart my computer if I'm gonna get it to work properly again. Anyway. <laughs> There's too many centipedes in my tablet and now it's broken. <laughs> No, no, I gotta fit. I gotta finish it. This is the last fucking panel on the last page I have to draw today. I can fucking do this. I'm gonna power through it. And if my brother gets home before I'm done streaming, then so be it. Why is it like, seriously, why is it my art streams where things always get weird? Like, cause last time it was, we, we talked about Pringles so much. And then now this time we're just talking about centipedes like a lot. I don't understand why this is happening. Centipedes believe in you. Do you speak for the centipedes? Are you the centipede, Lorax? I speak for the peds. <laughs> That's another movie I've never seen. But I've seen the memes for. And now that I've brought that cursed information into my chat, I can't wait to see what sort of chaos it unleashes.
I love this boss fight variation. It's cool. <laughs> Lucky for you, I was crunching on crackers and didn't any hear anything but that last part. Lucky for you, I think. You've been spared a terrible fate of listening to me talk about bullshit again. And yet you all voluntarily showed up to this stream. I think that's your fault. I cannot... It's assumption of risk when you come into my streams that we're going to talk about some bullshit. Like Pringles or centipedes. I wonder what the topic, what the very cursed topic of the next art stream will be. Anyone want to like take bets or anything? Okay, I just have one little vector and a couple of bricks to ink. I can do this. I can do this. Ah, I'm yelling. That's the sound of me yelling. Ah, my tablet. Why did you erase all of that? I only pressed the undo button once. Fuck you. Uh, it's getting all kinds of glitchy and weird now. Save real quick. Maybe that will help. Yeah, there's like some pretty serious mouse lag on my tablet now, but I, God damn it, I want to finish this page. I'm so close. Draw my son. This draws so fast. But why the fuck? Like, I hit the undo button once and it undoes like nine things. Fuck off. Okay. I'm gonna finish cut like this last little bit. I'm gonna finish off stream because my tablet's being too fucking weird. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it for the night, but let's raid somebody. Where's my mouse? There it is. Go to my other monitor, please. Thank you. Hmm. Let's find somebody we've never raided before. Let's find a new person to raid. Let's find somebody who, who's streaming art who doesn't have a lot of viewers that we can raid and surprise. Centipedes have infested your tablet. They certainly have. How dare they? Let's see. Oh, the internet's being real slow. Being real fucking slow. Oh, here's the card mini game theme. No, don't don't bring up weird centipede shit on a completely new person's stream. Here, let's find somebody to raid. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm just scrolling down the art page. find someone who's doing something cool and doesn't have a lot of views so we can raid. <laughs> Anyone doing comics? I'm looking. I am certainly looking. Maybe I can just, like, define that search term. Like, make somebody... Who is doing a comic? There. Show me the money. Show it to me, Twitch. <laughs> let me see, 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 let me see. Broken Ed, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream squad. You came in right at the end. We're trying to find somebody to raid right now. Oh. Hey. 
I'm streaming. Don't say anything regrettable. <laughs> Brother just got home. I'm almost done. Okay. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, we've got a couple of people who looks like they're working on like some webtoons or something. That's cool. What are you working on? Random person. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, this is taking a music. Oh yeah, chat says hi. He did like a cool guy wave. <laughs> Trying to load this up. I want to raid somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of viewers because I've got like 18 people in here still. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. And I feel like that if we raid somebody small, it's going to make their day more than if it, I just like raided somebody who already has a lot of viewers, you know? Oh, this art's nice. Very pretty. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I have found someone to raid. We are going to raid Rivenex. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they have a very cool art style. They're working on something interesting. They got a very cute overlay. Um, we activate the raid. They've only got one viewer right now, so I'm not sure if they either, they either just started or they've only got the one viewer, in which case we're going to just go bombard their stream. <laughs> All right, stream is starting. I'm going to go ahead and do my spiel. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out and following. Um, got a lot of new followers this stream. Thanks, everybody, for coming to hang out. Um, if you're not following already, make sure you do that, because that way you will get um, notifications every time I go live. If you're new, I do live streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Mondays and Fridays we do games, and then Wednesdays we do art streams. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm going to drop all these links in the chat. Um, and then you can also check out my webcomic, which is what I was working on today. Um, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, evening, night, whichever it happens to be. Um, and I will see you guys at the next one. Fare thee well, friends. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh,